It looks like PlayStation may be gearing up for changes in how they approach bringing their games to PC. A brand new blog about Ghosts of Tsushima on PC, it's pointing to a greater synergy between the console and the PC as platforms when it comes to PlayStation games. But does this mean they're going to start releasing their games on PC and PlayStation day and date? Do they have plans to release their own launcher on PC? I want to quickly break this down for you. And if you already watch my full length monologue about this, feel free to skip ahead four or five minutes to that live discussion Uh, and if you are here live right now I look forward to chopping this topic up with you I do like to put this quick breakdown at the beginning it's only about four minutes just so people that only watch the VOD kind of know what in the world we're talking about so if you're here live hit the like button hit subscribe all those things and I appreciate it very much Is PlayStation gearing up to change the way their games land on PC? Well, the latest blog about Ghost of Tsushima has the gaming world buzzing with speculation. Some claiming that this means they're going to start releasing their games day and date on the PC. Others think maybe it points to a PlayStation Store or a PlayStation Launcher that they would put on the PC. And I'm going to briefly break down the backstory, what happened, what's in this blog, right? I'm going to give you my thoughts, and then I'm going to end with some predictions. Then I'm going to discuss it with the live audience, okay? So... First, the backstory. PlayStation PC ports are not a new idea. Four years ago, we saw Horizon Zero Dawn. We now have a pretty huge, I think, PlayStation IP uh, landing on PC with Horizon Forbidden West. And then we saw other big titles make the jump. Days Gone, God of War, Spider-Man, and in about a month, Ghost of Tsushima. And just two years ago, Herman Holst spoke about how things were going to look going forward with this this bringing games to PC. And he basically said that the fastest it would ever happen would be 12 months after the original release on PlayStation. And the fastest that we've seen was Miles Morales and Horizon Forbidden West. There was about a two-year gap in between their initial release on PlayStation and their port to PC. We've also heard that PlayStation doesn't like parallel developments and they would prefer to use Nixus to port over a complete product and based on the reviews and the reception i feel like it's working rather well but the blog about ghost of tsushima points to a change playstation pc overlay will be baked into the game it's going to allow you to log into your playstation account you'll earn trophies you can do cross play with playstation players now this obviously looks a bit different than just the -the run-of-the-mill pc port so what do i think is going on here well I think the speculation that PlayStation games are going to start going PC day and date is a bit premature. I don't see that happening anytime soon, simply because they're not logistically set up for it, okay? Also, it's not a straight line solution to lower the budgets of your video games, you know, which is something that companies are focusing pretty heavily on right now, okay? Like laying people off to lower your operational costs to help lower production costs and the size of your game budgets, that doesn't really line up with then asking your first party devs to start building for multiple platforms. Also, I have it on very good authority from somebody at uh, SIE that building games for, you know, PlayStation and also PC is not as simplistic as like an Xbox developer because when they're building for Xbox, there's a more synergistic relationship between the PC platform and the Xbox operating system. So it would require new staff, new training. You'd extend the length of the project if you suddenly started asking first party PlayStation Studios to build games for PC. That's called parallel development. They're building in tandem and at the same time for both platforms. All of that would increase the budget. Okay. Now the pushback is always, well, they'll make more money. They're going to sell day and date. They're going to make more money. Well, maybe there are theories about a PlayStation store and uh, a PlayStation launcher on PC. Now that would start to make more sense because if they're not revenue splitting with steam, Well, it would make it more profitable to release a PlayStation game day and date on PC. So let me make some quick predictions. First, I think day and date for big first party titles actually will eventually happen. Probably, I've said this, around the time we get to the PlayStation 6 era. And they would put the game in their own launcher on release date, day and date. It would come to Steam later. Spider-Man 3, we know from the Insomniac leaks, is likely one of the first big games to do this. It's launching day one with multiplayer. This is what it said on the chart. We don't know if this is this is actually happening. Maybe they were just planning to do this. But it was going to launch day one with multiplayer and then also on PC. I do not think that that's because Spider-Man 3 is going to be a live service game because we know PlayStation live service games land day and date on PC like we saw with Helldivers 2. 
My opinion is that by the time the PlayStation 6 era gets here, the PlayStation console user base is not going to suddenly like jump to PC because of day and date releases. They'll have an established library, and the console is almost always going to assuredly be cheaper as an option compared to consumer level pre built gaming PCs when you go into like a store or when you're on Amazon. Even if some people do jump to PC, PlayStation's still getting all of their money because they're having their own launcher. In my in my presumption and my assumption here, that's what it would look like. So they could potentially expand their user base with some of their customers not buying hardware. Also, they typically lose money on the hardware anyway. My only concern with this is that the pattern of first-party devs building just for PlayStation leads to better quality games. They're better optimized. They can curate the game for that hardware, specifically for the architecture of the PlayStation. Multi-plat games, Xbox first party games, they have consistently shown up less polished, they're very clearly not ready for launch, and all these things have to be done after the fact. That's a symptom, I think, of building for multiple platforms. You don't find those symptoms in the first party PlayStation Studio releases. Even the rough edges of Rise of the Ronin and Final Fantasy 16, they're not nearly as bad as some of the abysmal launches we've seen this generation. And Rise of the Ronin and Final Fantasy 16 are not even first-party studios. I have the first-party PlayStation games in mind here. Those studios have been absolutely stellar, and they've been very consistent. So if PlayStation makes this move, I just hope we still get great, high-quality games. They keep coming to the market, and then more people get to play them. I think that that's great. But if quality suffers, I'm going to be the first to say, I told you so. But that's just what I think. Now it's time to hear what you think and good morning good afternoon and good evening thank you guys so much for the strong turnouts to the premiere we hope that was clearer this morning you couldn't see this live stream i had it hidden from you so that you would not get confused on where you're supposed to go we really really appreciate you guys kind of getting behind this idea of starting the day with the premiere and then doing the live stream after and i still need to do that very quick like four or five minute recap because there are going to be people that only watch this VOD, and I don't want them to be like, what the heck is going on? He just turned on and just started talking to the audience. So you're just going to have to kind of bear with hearing some of the information twice. Like, if you're that loyal and you're here as soon as the premiere starts, you're just going to have to kind of wear that, right? Four or five minutes of a recap will really help set the stage for what ends up being usually like a two-hour long stream. Second stream today will be checking out the early access of No Rest for the Wicked, which I believe is installable uh, now. Uh, It was supposed to be installable around 10 o'clock, and I want to make sure I get that thing installed. It's plan. It's plan release. It says is less than an hour, so I might just have to reboot Steam to get the uh, the storefront to update. So, guys, go through the ritual. Smash the like button. I'm still recording. Sorry, creature. <laughs> I'm still recording. We we do record that four minute uh, or five minute recap so that he can use that on one of our other channels. Um, so yeah, go through all of the rituals, guys, smash a like button, hit subscribe, and let me thank some of the people who are already doing members. We made a big change, uh, just this week. A member is a member. So if you get a gifted member, you get to come to the writer's room and a bunch of you got to experience that for the first time yesterday. And Mark M with two months of membership says if Sony makes their own launcher or store, they will come crawling back to steam just like other publishers who bought, brought their catalog back eventually. I don't think PlayStation will say no to Steam. You I, you either didn't you either didn't catch the whole video or you missed it or I, I'm not sure what. But um they would launch day and date in their own launcher and then they would still kick the game to Steam later. Does that make sense? So I, I, I don't think that they're going to be like, no, we're never putting our games in Steam ever again. What I indicated that they would do is they would do day and date in their own launcher and then you know six months later a year later they kick it to steam and then dumpy koala han shot first and so did you first gifted member of the day takes us to one but then it's just blue signs up for reforge vip plus which we were actually wanting to deprecate that tier level (laughs) i'm asking all those people to not do those anymore we just want to have the vip at 10 whatever i appreciate it you're going to be one of the many people that probably just stays there out of love and support i appreciate it (laughs) we're 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 struggling right now with that we only want to have like 
the standard member at five and VIP at ten. But yeah, I really appreciate the support. Um, and that that goes above and beyond to do a membership of that high. Uh, you can go kick rocks with nine months of membership. Says morning, glad to be here. Monty Mole with thirteen months says big 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 ups. Thank you so much, Monty Mole, for a little over a year. And then Joker Quinn gifts another member. So I'm gonna count the VIP plus as three members. So that would have taken us to four, and now we're at five with Joker Quinn tempting the 20 bomb uh somebody might drop a 20 bomb on us and blast us all the way up we appreciate you guys so so much being here gifting those members and doing all of the things so i want to know what you guys think i really want to know what you guys think do you think that this is a sign that playstation's getting ready to do day and date or the PlayStation's getting ready to launch their own launcher or launch their own storefront or something on PC. What do you think about that? I, I don't think they did this overlay in Ghost of Tsushima just to be this. And Mass drops the 20 bomb on chat. Unbelievable. Yesterday, you guys got to 120, I believe. I'm just going to say it. You were at 120 yesterday on our way to the goal of 300 and MASH just absolutely skyrocketing us to 145. You guys are crushing it. The goal this week was 300. You're basically halfway there. I can like your super chat. Look at that. We can like a super chat. Capono says, I'm loving how Sony is getting serious about PC. Thank you for the $2 super chat tip. And thank you, Mash, for the five spot. I now owe you guys five members. I give five every five. Uh, every five every 25, sorry. I'm trying to read chat, but the 20 bomb pushed it out. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> so maybe I'll ask the question again. What do you guys think? Do you think this is a sign of like a, of a launcher or day and date? I think day one will happen with their own PC storefront, says the one... Uh, let's see what some of somebody else said. Nick says PC dudes wait years for PlayStation games to come. They'll wait for them to come to Steam. Also, if they really wanted to play PlayStation games, they would have bought a PlayStation. This is the death of PlayStation. I don't know why. Why? Why are you saying that you think this is the death of PlayStation? You got to spell that one out for me. And a five bomb for Joker Quinn. Thank you so so much. He bumps the line. That's Agents of Chaos. We're now twenty away from fifty. We'll see if somebody else wants to dunk on the chat like Mash did. Another twenty bomb. We'll see if somebody takes the bait. Thank you, Joker Quinn. Big Evil with sixteen months says, "Might be time to upgrade my ten sixty. Don't laugh at me. Hey, hey, man. I'm not laughing at you. If you get a lot of life out of PC hardware, good for you. Seriously, there's nothing to laugh at there." Eugene says the launcher is all but confirmed, in my opinion. Juan Star with eight months says an SIE developed launcher, as long as it's not bug infested cesspool with day one releases, may work. They cannot expect third party support, though. Yeah, that would be the re- that was that's another good point as to why I don't think that would cause people to jump from PlayStation console to PC because all their library on PlayStation would get left behind. Like you're not going to be able to bring all your third party games with you over to a PlayStation launcher. The PlayStation launcher would be like their own titles, which again, that's them trying to expand their user base, getting more people to buy their games. Even if you are on Steam and you're like, "No, I refuse to do that. I'm not going to buy Spider-Man 3 in in the Sony launcher, well, even if you wait and buy it on Steam, they're still getting money from you, albeit they're getting a little bit less because they have to revenue share with Steam at that point. Dumpy Koala with a gifted member takes us to 31 members on the day. Thank you so much, Dumpy Koala. A a PlayStation PC store with dual entitlements would be a monster, says Eugene. It's like Honda trying to decide if they want to add a two-seat Roadster to the lineup and people saying Honda is in trouble. Yeah, I don't know why this would be, like, bad for PlayStation. They've proven the concept that their games can sell well and perform well and do well on PC. Why would this hurt them? Like, I really don't think that people are going to suddenly say, oh, man, I've had a PlayStation 5 or a PlayStation 5 Pro now for four, five, six years, 
and there's a PlayStation 6, but Spider-Man 3 is going to go on PC. Instead of buying a PlayStation 6 for, you know, five or six hundred dollars, I'm going to spend over a thousand dollars or more, depending on what you're looking for, right? If you're going to jump to PC over PlayStation, I'm assuming you would be motivated by the performance, right? You would be motivated by the performance. You would say, well, I'm going to get better performance out of a PC. Well, that would mean that you're going to spend quite a bit of money if you're like, I want... If that I'm talking value, right? If that's your value system, you're going to say, I'm going to spend a good amount of money. Well, when you go to the gaming rigs that are pre-built, Amazon, Best Buy, I'm talking average consumer here, you're looking at a $1,500 purchase. You're looking at spending over $1,000, $1,000 more than potentially with the console. I don't think large droves of consumers are going to say, well, I'm going to leave behind my library. I'm going to leave behind what's familiar and what's convenient. I'm going to leave behind all these third-party games that I also own on my PlayStation, and I'm going to spend an extra $1,000 and buy a PC. Now, there would be people that would do this, potentially. Maybe they right now have everything, and that they would just say, you know what? Since they're going to be putting all the big first-party games on PC, my PC's pretty strong. I'm just going to start buying the PlayStation games on PC, and I'm not going to buy the PlayStation 6. I do think there would be people in that scenario, or there would be people that say, you know what, I'm going to buy a beastly PC rig, man. My friend's been talking about it. I've got some extra money lying around. I think I'm going to do it. I don't think you would see this mass exodus of the console user base. That just doesn't, it doesn't stand to reason that consumers would change their behavior like that with such with so many barriers in their way more money it's not as simplistic and as straightforward as a console right like i I just think not only that you've got to get all of the other peripherals for it like you're not just going to plug it into your tv you got to have a mouse and a keyboard what are you going to do with that in your entertainment room what are you going to do with that in your living room like there's a lot of barriers for the average gaming consumer to say, I'm not doing that. If I can get Spider-Man 3 on a PlayStation 6 and it runs and it looks well, I'm going to do that, right? Like, I I don't think this is a cause for concern that some people have. I really don't. With a PC launcher, what will the dashboard be then? The PS5 or the PS4? Maybe go back to the OG era PS2? I think they would try to make it look like the PlayStation 5. Or, or they, they would want to have that... that that synergy uh i'm one that will leave it behind if sony drops ps plus to play multiplayer games i'll consider staying with them here's the thing about that nick you can't hurt playstation by refusing to buy their hardware if you continue to buy their games like if you continue to buy let's just imagine a future nick where you buy Spider-Man 3, God of War 9, Horizon Forbidden 3, you know, you buy all of those games. In a PlayStation launcher, you haven't done anything to PlayStation. You just didn't buy their hardware. Now, the only thing they're going to lose from you is you're no longer on their hardware buying third-party games, which certainly that would be a concern. But we know... A lot of the money they make from third-party games, those people are just going to continue buying the console and continuing to buy FIFA, Call of Duty, Madden, whatever. I don't think they're suddenly going to say, oh, I'm going to go over to PC and figure all that out over there. I'm going to play Call of Duty on PC and and FIFA and Madden. No. No. I I don't think you're going to see those people leave. So yes, they would lose the third-party money, But again, I don't think there are people like you in a high enough quantity that it would matter. Do you want to know why? Because there are so many people on PC. The number of people that would suddenly be like, oh, I'll buy Spider-Man 3 day one. I was never going to buy a console. I think there are more of those people than there are of the people that are going to like leave PlayStation behind to play on PC. So I think they would expand their user base, not shrink or lose their user base. That's what I think would happen. Capona with a $2 super chat tip says, Nixus is killing it. Uh, they are about that quality. Guys, make sure and smash the like button. Great turnout today. We've only been streaming for about 20 minutes. Usually, I would still be doing my monologue. I'm not. I'm talking to you because we made a change. That premiere goes live every morning. That's the monologue. So if you want to see the monologue, you can watch that later. Or I do a very brief four-minute recap here for you. But 
It is immensely helpful to me when you guys pile into the monologue or watch it later. So thank you to everybody who did that. I'm actually going to pull up and maybe read some of the comments because the comments on that monologue, they're going to be relevant to what we're talking about because there are people that are pretty passionate about this. Sneaky Wolf with the five spot says, a storefront cost to run so people waiting for Steam uh, could cause a small issue. Um, I mean, there are certainly people that would wait, right? Sneaky Wolf, is that what you wanted me to see? Check my last comment. Hang on a minute. I have new options here. Channel activity, go to channel, pin message, report, remove, put in timeout, hide user. Oh, it's just add as moderator. Um, the storefront on their launcher could cause people to the, wait. Right. Here's the thing. If that happens, though, they're still getting money from that person, brother. They're still getting money from that person. If someone's like, oh, I'm just going to wait and buy it on Steam. They get a little bit less money from you, but they still get your money. They still get a sale from you. You know, if a million people buy it in the launcher and another million people buy it on Steam like a year later, okay, that's still money going into the bank. I mean, (laughs) a little less, obviously, because of Steam taking their 30%. Raptor with 13 months says, had time to catch my favorite Sony pony, but seriously, hope you're doing well. Thank you so much, Raptor. Oh, Raptor, I got your DM. It was very kind. Thank you. Uh, Slapman with 20 months. Welcome back. Let's check some of the comments here on the video. There's already quite a few. Uh, Roadkill says, just because Microsoft is doing all this push for PC, PlayStation's a different type of machine. It is in a $3 trillion dollar. Uh, it's a $3 trillion company. They're going to have to stick to their console. Uh, um, they're going to stick to it forever. And then a bunch of thumbs up. And this guy, Jackknife, says, Deal breakers day and date. If they go day and date, I'm not buying their next console. I've been with PlayStation from the jump, but this is pushing me away. I'm not buying the $70 version on PlayStation when I can play the superior version day and date on PC, probably cheaper too. Not if they do their own launcher. They will still get your money and it will still be $70. That See, that's the kicker right there. You can't run away from it. You can't run away from it. If you if you want to play Spider-Man 3 Day 1 and you're like, well, I'm going to go to PC where it's cheaper. No, if you buy it through their launcher, it's going to be 70 bucks. You know, well, Spider-Man 3 is actually potentially going to be broken into two parts and it's going to be $50 for each part. But still, like, you get the point that I'm making. If you, if you want to play God of War, you know, 9 or whatever the next one is, you buy it from their storefront, you're, you're, paying, you're paying the full price. Eugene says, if the only way to play PS games on PC is through their PC store and they give you dual entitlements for their game and third party, they won't care if you left the console. You'll buy everything through their store anyways. Yeah, I wonder if third party would, would play along. Um... Well, apparently, uh, Gemini can't summarize ongoing live streams. It was, we had a thing where the, the chat was getting summarized by AI a while ago. I don't know if it's still doing it, but I want to know how they'll stop the pirates. Um, Sony day and date games aren't cheaper on steam. Yeah. I mean, hell divers wasn't any cheaper on steam. So ain't nobody giving you dual entitlements. I don't know, Roberto. If you launch a PlayStation PC launcher, yes, I think they would give you dual entitlements. They don't care at that point. You bought the game at full price from them. Why would they care? It would be attached to your PlayStation account. How, come on. If you go into a... Again, we're imagining a hypothetical PlayStation launcher where you log in with your PlayStation account and buy a game at full price on your account... Yes, they would. You would go. It would be on your. It would be on your console, one hundred percent. It's attached to your. It's attached to your account. Do I have ghosts on? If I bought it on PS4, well, no, because they're selling the game in Steam. This is a different. This is a different uh, situation. It's a completely different situation. Currently, Ghost is coming to Steam. So that's not something where they can give you dual entitlement because you're buying a license to have the game on Steam with with that account that you have with Steam, right? You're buying it from them. Now, they're letting you log into your PlayStation account to get trophies, 
and to do crossplay, but you're not buying it with your PlayStation account. Do you see the difference? I think that might seem like that's a splitting hair, but it's not. You are going to Steam with a Steam account. They're getting 30% of the purchase, and then you can log in once you're in the game and you load it up. You can log in and you can then say, hey, I want to I wanna, you know, get my trophies. Or, you know, I want credit for my trophies or whatever. Honestly, if you bought Ghost of Tsushima on PlayStation, and let's say you're three hours into the game and you've gotten some of the trophies, and then you played the game on PC, you would get the rest of those trophies. Now, obviously, it would be like playing through the game a second time for the first couple of hours. You can't get the trophies again. You would already have them, but then you would start to get the ones, you know, like getting to Act 2 or whatever. You would get those those, uh, those trophies. Uh, AOZ says, Why is it that whenever we talk about PC PlayStation games that people think everyone will abandon a cost-effective console to buy a PC that has a technical barrier of entry? That's what I said earlier. I was like, I just don't think so. I don't think m- mil- hundreds of millions of people, literally like over 100 million people, you know, have the 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 stinking PlayStation 4 and what we're at 50 million now on the PlayStation 5 so by the end of this generation if they get good conversion we'll have roughly the same amount of people you're not going to see millions upon millions of people saying you know what I'm going to do I'm going to go spend more money and I'm going to abandon my library on my PlayStation 5 to go to the PC now if the PlayStation store gave you your entire library maybe but there would be plenty of games that wouldn't come with you because they wouldn't be compatible all of your backwards compatible games maybe older third party games or maybe third party games that there's no PC version of you wouldn't be playing them on the cloud you would be installing a PC version of the game which means you'd leave behind a significant amount of your library I don't think people are going to do that Phil Spencer indicated your digital library is a huge sticking point for people y'all seem to forget that the PlayStation Store is the one with the bargaining power in this hypothetical Uh, Yoshida says, would you like to work with us to support talented indie game developers in the world? Apply. They're looking for a global partner development manager. Somebody said, I have no formal experience, but I know I could do a better job than most. Should I apply? Yoshida said, no. (laughs) That's... That's as the kids say, that's pretty, you know, that's pretty based. Just to literally reply in the public to be like, no you don't apply (laughs) you have no formal experience you know he should have been like no get out of my mentions (laughs) Uh, what's good Haseo no one will do that for an old game PlayStation's PC sales have shown that staggered PC release is the way they need to find the right window I'm not tracking with what you're trying to say Jeeves it sounds like you're saying two different things I'm confused by your statement Eugene says, I'm trying uh, to be the dominant storefront in gaming. Zubair said, P- PlayStation customers are on PlayStation. I'm confused. Are you trying to get PC players? That's true. Like 2000 next gen version. I'm not. Yeah, what are you talking about, Team Ambush? Consoles are just so incredibly convenient that the vast majority wouldn't convert. You can't just set it in your living room, your entertainment area. You have to do that, all the stuff to hook it up. It's tough to beat that. That's I'm telling you, there's, a, there's the initial price barrier. If you're standing in Best Buy or Target and you're like, okay, they have a PlayStation 6 for $600. And you pull out Amazon and you're like, well, let me get a gaming rig for $600. It ain't going to be a very good gaming rig, okay? If you're compelled by like, oh, Spider-Man 3's on PC, look at the graphics. And if you're in the know about how to get those graphics, you're not going to buy a $600 gaming rig. You aren't. Pre-built gaming rigs that are decent typically start around $800 to $1,000 if you go to Amazon, if you go to Best Buy. Again, we're dealing with a consumer who's not going to try to build a PC. They're going to just buy one. So they're like, okay, that's going to cost me more money. Oh, and then I got to figure out what to do with the mouse and keyboard in my living room. And then I got to figure out how I'm going to hook it up. 
Is it HDMI? Like, you know what I'm saying? If you're not from that world, if you don't know PC gaming, you don't know that, yeah, it's not that difficult. You can get a wireless, you know, keyboard and mouse and an HDMI cable and you're fine. You're golden. Like, the average consumer would be like, I don't know, I'm spending more money and it sounds like I'm going to have to do extra stuff. And they would say, I'm not doing that. They're not going to abandon the cheaper and you know, not just cheaper, but more convenient option. This is not hypothetical. Kids these days using computers in grade school way more than us adults did while in school. They will use a PC to game more than a console. The PC is normal to them. Homie, I don't know who you think you're talking to. I'm 42, and... I had a computer in my home growing up, and we had computers in our schools growing up. I, th- th- I wasn't like, huh, these computers are so confounding and confusing. Uh, no. The gaming generation that's in their, you know, th- that's, that's, that's my age and down, like 40s and down, we're, we're not like, oh, computers are so foreign and weird. Like, sure, once you get into people that are 50s and up, they didn't grow up so integrated with tech to the degree that like a PC was in the home and like PCs were in the, you know, in the high schools or whatever. I, I think what you're describing is bizarre. Like, well, yeah, the, these kids these days, they really grow up with computers and we didn't. It's like, what are you talking about? I, <laughs> I had a computer lab in my, my high school growing up. It was a public school. We, we installed Doom. My friend installed a key logger on the computer got the got the the teacher to put in his password to do something and the key logger got the teacher's password we installed doom it won't show my it didn't show my text yo it's blue thank you for the two dollar super chat i don't know why it didn't didn't show your text type whatever you were going to say and i'll read it i don't know why youtube did that i'm sorry that it did that I don't think the generation behind us is like, yay PC. I think they just play wherever their friends go. If their friends are playing on the Switch, if they're playing on phones or tablets, like my nephews are all across a spectrum of age. One of them is, you know, driving and the other is like 12. So like they're all across like different age brackets and different friend circles and they play on everything. They play on everything. They play on phones, switches, Xbox. They just got a PlayStation 5 and they have a PC. Like, they don't care. They're not, they, they're not, they don't like have like a preference. They're like, well, I really like it. They just play wherever they want to play. And the reason they got a PS5, the games, they were like, there's games I have, we can't play. They wanted to play Spider Man. They wanted to play. Um, what was the other one that they wanted to play? I think they wanted to play Ratchet and Clank. I think they were also considering getting a PSVR, uh, a PSVR 2. Ink Sanity with 31 months of members. Hello there. Many thanks for all the content and still riding the great train. Long may it continue, sir. Thank you, Ink Sanity. Yes, we did have them, just not as much as they are now. It's not just high schools. They bring home computers to do homework in middle school. Okay, that's a fair point, Joel. That's a fair point. They are a lot more, you know, integrated with, like, laptops and stuff. But the thing that you're missing is they're also heavily integrated with their cell phones. They're also heavily integrated with tablets. They don't care. They're just, they'll just play games where the games are. They have more of an eclectic approach to gaming. And this is just in my experience, right? Even the kids at my church are this way. They just kind of play wherever. They don't care. Wherever the latest trend is, whether it's Apex or Fortnite or Roblox, they just sort of move like a like a mass of bodies to whatever the game thing that is going on. Like if their circle of friends plays Madden, they're going to go wherever they, they feel like it's best to play Madden or Call of Duty. They're not like, oh, yeah, I just, I really like to play on PC, bro. Like they will, they don't even talk like that. They don't talk about where they play. They talk about what they play. I've never talked to a teenager and down that 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 stresses the device they play on. They talk about the games that they play. Right. That that's what they typically do. My kiddos are growing up the exact same way. 
they don't they get confused when they can't play a game on the Xbox. They're like, wait, why can't I play Princess Peach on the Xbox? Like that doesn't make sense to them. Because in their mind, they'll just grab whatever's in front of them and just play a game. They're like, I just want to play video games. Like, that's all that matters to them. This is why I don't think PlayStation's suddenly going to be, like, damaged by, well, if they can figure out to get their games on PlayStation and PC day and day, like, all that's going to damage them. It's like, no, that's just a larger user base. Because by the time the PlayStation 6 comes out, the console loyalists are there. They're not leaving. They've been doing it for too long. People that have gone from PS4 to PS5, they're just going to go right into the PS6. They're just going to like, yep, this is easy for me. That older generation doesn't care. Now, the younger generation might do both. They might, some of them might buy a PlayStation 6, and some of them might buy, you know, a PC. My biggest concern with PlayStation doing this is quality. It always has been quality. Is the minute you start developing your product for more than one platform, I think the pattern is clear. PlayStation first party studios have launched in the last four years better games, more optimized games. They're way more polished. They're way higher quality and caliber. It, comparatively to all of the other multi-plat games and Xbox first party games that have come out in the last four years, the PlayStation first party studios are superior. And it's because they built for one platform. And you don't get a curated version of an Xbox game for the console anymore. You don't. You get a multi-plat game. So I'm very concerned. I'm like, if PlayStation goes this route, I don't know. You're going to lose that secret sauce, man. You start developing games for PlayStation and PC, and the architecture and the software is a lot different. I had somebody from SIE tell me this morning. They were like, look, man, going from Xbox to PC, it's trivial compared to going from PlayStation to PC. That's why you get a company like Nixus to port your game. You get somebody that's good at porting. Hey, you you guys do it. We, we build the game for PlayStation. That's what we do. We build games for the PlayStation architecture and all the cool stuff that the PlayStation can do. And then you guys can take it and you can take it over to PC land. I, that's why I'm like, I don't know. If they move the day and date by the time the PS6 era comes out, it's either going to be because... Like, Insomniac may have helped with their games. I don't know. They're credited on Steam alongside Nixus. So maybe they're trying to get better at it. Maybe they're trying to better understand it. Maybe the PSSR technology that they're developing for the PS5 Pro is is in some way related to this. They're going to start training their people to say, hey, you know, we're, we're going to build for this and that's going to enable us to then learn how to build for PC you know leveraging upscalers who at SIE why, why do you need to know who it is That that's not the first time I've heard that by the way that it's easier for games that are developed for Xbox to also be developed for PC because of similarities between the software that doesn't seem that outlandish to claim or say Supremacy with a $10 super chat says, I think someone is trying to downplay the price and convenience and simplicity of a console. Sony should launch their own launcher and do three to six months release for it and a year release to Steam. My main hang up on it isn't the money. I think they could do it in a way where they would make fu- they would per- make all of the money that they need to. It's about the quality. I thought more optimization came from developing for a single platform. It does. That's why, that's exactly why I've always been very much in support of exclusivity and exclusives. Like, listen, I got people in my mentions that didn't even watch my Gears of War talk show, and they're out here telling me that I'm like a hypocrite and that, oh, I'm out here port begging for Gears of War. No. I'm merely looking at what Xbox is doing and saying, yeah, they're probably going to put the next Gears of War on PlayStation. They probably are. But I got a bunch of hate in 2023 when I said, I would much prefer Xbox take the $70 billion and invest it in their studios and invest it in their property. And if they would have just done the Series X and then they would have gotten their developers to build games for the Series X, we would have gotten better games. But I got a bunch of hate for saying that. 
But now I'm a hypocrite because I'm like, yeah, they're probably just going to launch their games on PlayStation. I don't want that to happen. I would much prefer Xbox have invested in their first-party studios and in their architecture to have a hardware synergy with their developers. And they didn't freaking do that. They launched a Series X and a Series S. No games are built for or optimized for the Series X. So why in the world would I want or care about their first-party games no longer being exclusive? They're not tapping into the power of the hardware that they sold me. So I'm not a hypocrite. You're just too stupid to understand that there is a world of difference between making a game for one box and making a game for multiple platforms and never getting a curated exclusive. You don't have a single Xbox Series X curated exclusive. You don't. You don't. So, I'm staying consistent. There's no hypocrisy in saying, listen, this company didn't do what I value. I wanted them to invest in their studios. I wanted them to invest in their first party property. And now they're putting their games everywhere. So yeah, Gear 6 is probably coming to PlayStation. Why? Because they've completely changed strategy. And when I look at PlayStation, and I look at PlayStation PC games, and I start hearing day and date, I think I could see them making more money if they do their own launcher but the first thing i think of is is that going to hurt quality now you're doing parallel development now you're in the same dadgum situation that all the xbox studios got put in i don't think that's a good idea i think it's a far better idea to build for playstation you tap into the architecture you tap into the hardware and then you get a company like nixus to port it and then everybody who buys the game on their preference of platform whether you prefer to play on pc or you prefer to play on playstation both consumers get a better product than they would if the game was parallel developed for both so that it could land at the exact same time. And you're going to have to wait for the game anywhere, which is always so hilarious to me. It's like, so right now, if they want to bring the game just to PlayStation and then port it later to PC, they could put like a 12 to 18 month buffer in between when it lands on PlayStation and when it lands on PC. Do you actually think that if they suddenly were parallel developing the game for the PC and the PlayStation at the exact same time, don't you think it would actually end up probably coming out about 12 to 18 months later anyway? Right? Like, it's like you're still going to wait for the game. That's why I've always been in support of the way that PlayStation's doing it. It's like they build a really high quality product. They make good on their hardware promises. And then you get a great company like Nixus to port it later. And then both the PC audience and the PlayStation audience get a good product. Lono has no faith in Sony's first party studios. It's not that I don't have faith in them. It's just conventional wisdom. It's what developers have said. Developers have quite literally said, it's easier on us to build for one platform. We can do more. The game's more optimized. It comes out faster. They've said all of this. I'm trusting all of the developers across a large spectrum. There are Xbox, third-party, and PlayStation developers that have all said this. They've all said this. Why? I, I know better. Some, some PC Master Race ideologue knows better than all these developers that are saying it's better for us in the product to build for one system. You're going to trust like propagandistic pundits who make money off of rage baiting and making videos criticizing developers. You're trusting them. They have a vested interest in, in creating that environment. They're not telling you the truth. The developers are telling you the truth. They're like, we, get, we make a better product when we build for one system. It's easier. It's faster. They've all said it because it's true. They're not saying it because they're out here trying like, like Todd Howard's trying to fool you or the guy from uh, Arcane said it. He's trying to fool you or the litany of other developers that have come out and said it. They're all just what? They're all trying to fool the public to be like, well, we really want to make everybody think that this is the way that it is. We really, we really could make a lot more money and make games for all platforms extremely easily, but we just don't want to. Like, businesses don't like money, apparently. Studios owned by a platform are more trustworthy? No, when you have corroborative information across a litany of developers, I think that that's trustworthy. I think what's less trustworthy is people who say what you want to hear because they know they can make you angry and then they can make a buck off of it. 
the us versus them mentality. Like, I trust developers way more than ideologues because ideologues aren't reasonable. They're not logical. They're not rooted. They're not making their position rooted in facts. It's rooted in ideology. They're like, no, it should be everywhere. Why? It's an ideology. It's ideology. It's belief. Yo, thank you, Silent Serpent, for upgrading to VIP. Doc, I see you in the chat. I'll respond in a second. Rye with the VIP renewal. Thank you so much for doing that, Rye. Did I miss anything else on Fan Funny? No, that's it. All right. Thank you so much for those VIPs. You got Zubair chanting VIP. Doc says PS5 is no more. PC is the way. I know you got funds for a better PC. Come to this side. Sony's coming over here. No, they're not. No, they're not, Doc. They're not logistically set up to do day and date right now. They're not. Their developers aren't set up for it. Their developers are set up to build for PlayStation. We've got it on good authority that the developers are being asked to get the games ready for the PS5 Pro. You don't buy a company like Nixus. You don't have Herman Holst two years ago saying, the fastest you're going to see this is 12 months. And the fastest we've seen it has actually only been 24 months. Why? Because logistically, that's what they're set up for. Thank you, Sadiqua, for gifting a member and taking us to 32 members on the day. Like, they are simply not logistically set up to do day and date. They're not. Now, I've said they might switch to being day and date down the road, right? Like, baking in a PlayStation overlay, to me, actually, more screams they're going to put their own launcher. They're going to put their own PlayStation launcher on PC. So when their games do come to PC, they make more of the money than Steam. They're not, they don't want to share with Steam. I don't think they're logistically set up for it right now. Now, they could be working toward that. I said it. I said it when I was on Crossfire with Mooch and the gang, and I've said it here many times. I think by the time we get to the PS6 era, they are going to be more open to and potentially doing day and date. Because by that point in time, they'll either have established the logistics and the pipelines to do it, but right now... Their primary goal right now is to shrink budget size. They're literally laying people off. Like, in what universe do we say, oh, they're laying people off, they're trying to combat rising budgets, let's ask them to develop for two platforms. Those things don't make any sense. Stop disrespecting the great Sony developers saying they can only develop for PS5. This time next year we got day and date. Wolverine will be day and date. No. No. Thank you, Darth Nihilus, for the gifted, taking us to 33. No. The, the, first and foremost, the only one we saw day and date from the Insomniacs leaks was Spider-Man 3. What's good, Brap? <clears throat> like, I, the, the idea that in just two years' time, like what Herman Hulse said in the interview in 2022... In just two years' time, the idea that they're going to completely philosophically and logistically change how they're making their games, I don't see any evidence for that. I see the opposite. You know how this is for my channel about to ride this wave? I mean, what wave, Doc? Two or three ports a year? Like, you think that's a wave? (laughs) They're just going to bring two or three games a year with Nixus. And I don't know, maybe anybody else, but... It's not disrespect. You don't turn NASCAR drivers into F1 drivers or vice versa and saying that isn't disrespect. Right. I I don't... It's not insulting to say that developers prefer to build for one platform and the game comes out better and the game comes out faster and more optimized. The PlayStation first party studios are kicking the crap out of everybody else. In the last four years... The multi-plat games and the Xbox first-party games are largely pretty embarrassing. Not polished, not ready for the market, bugs, glitches. I mean, how long how, how long are the patch notes for Starfield every time they fix problems in Starfield? It's getting it's getting patches that fix like 500 things. Forza Motorsport, disastrous launch. Redfall, disastrous launch. And then you've got third-party games like Jedi Survivor, Dragon's Dogma 2, The Lords of the Fallen. Glitchy, buggy, awful, terrible performance, poorly optimized. And then you look at the PlayStation first-party studios. Pristine, award-nominated, well-optimized, excellent, highly critically acclaimed games. PlayStation first-party studios are just kicking the dog snot out of everybody else. It's not even close in quality. It's not even close. 
it's so consistently seen. It's like you you want to run to I guess maybe Final Fantasy 16's performance mode, which I'm critical of that, and Rise of the Ronin. Well, those aren't PlayStation first party studios. You know, a lot of y'all are out here saying PlayStation ain't got no games because you don't count those games. And then all of a sudden you want to count them? Well, make up your mind. Do they count or don't they? PlayStation has no games because those ones don't count, right? Oh, but they count when we want to talk about performance issues. Make up your mind. Which is it? A gifted from Stone Spire. Thank you so much. Like, all that matters to me is... If it's an exclusive or not, I don't care who owns the studio. If I can only play the game on Nintendo or I can only play the game on PlayStation, I don't care who owns the studio. But performance-wise, come on. It's not even a comparison right now. PWH now with nine months. Sony is making uh, research into their own launcher. Horizon got hacked in under an hour of release. They're trying to combat that before day and date. That shirt's so dope, Lono. Some people in chat have no idea what it is. Um, in the future, people will have shirts like that with a PS5 instead. Now listen to me, Doc. <laughs> My kids asked what it was. My kids. <laughs> they were like, what is that, Papa? I was like, well, I actually had a catalyst to explain it to them. I did. I said, you know how you guys go to the library and you get CDs that uh, for audiobooks? I said before CDs, they looked like this. It was a cassette tape and you would put it into something and and these little parts would spin and as the tape moved through, you could hear the music. So they actually understood. It was easy to explain it to them. But yeah, they were like, what is that? (laughs) What do you think uh, every PlayStation first party game has a performance mode at 60 uh, and then all the next gen games on Xbox don't? It's because Xbox is constantly cross developing for the Series X, the S and PC. Thank you, Sneaky Wolf. That's exactly right. You honestly, you expect me to look at the market right now and what developers are you going to give praise for next gen and performance and optimization? Who? You're going to talk about Insomniac. You're going to talk about Santa Monica. You're going to talk about Gorilla. You're not going to talk about Dragon's Dogma 2. You're not going to talk about Jedi Survivor or Lords of the Fallen, you're not going to talk about any of that. If right now you were making a video about the best developers this generation with respect to leveraging next-gen features and well-optimized games that were ready when they came out, you're going to list PlayStation first-party studios. Now, you might list Capcom before Dragon's Dogma 2, and that would probably be one of the ones that would sneak in there as a third-party multiplat. You you're you're not gonna what are you gonna what are you gonna you're gonna list Bethesda? <laughs> you, you you're gonna list them? You're gonna list three four three? Are are you? Are you gonna list Arcane? Are they doing a good job this generation? Like, that's the point I'm making. When you go to these developers, why do you think some of these developers have fallen from grace? What do you think happened? They're trying to do more complex things. They're trying to do bigger and more ambitious projects, and they got to develop for multiple platforms. And when you take a developer who's like, we're going to try to do more ambitious things. We're going to try to do some of this cool new graphical stuff like ray tracing, and we're only building for one box. Why do you think they're doing a better job? Why? Because as the ambitions of games and the scope of what they want to do with games and the graphics and the lighting and all that fancy stuff, as that goes out like this, you got to have a way of reining that back in. You have, you have to have a way of reining that back in. If you're trying to do all that while also building for all these other platforms... Yeah, I mean, Returnal had some bugs, but Returnal was a well-optimized, great game at launch. Like, it's also a smaller studio, right? Was Returnal even first party when it launched? I thought they bought Housemark afterward. In any case, the, the, the issues in Returnal were not even close to being as glaring as, like, Jedi Survivor. Like, Jedi Survivor was, like, un, unplayable. 
I'm still dying laughing. It was a PlayStation only game and Xbox bought the studio. I bought it when it came out. Now I have it on Game Pass. Oh, which game are you talking about? First Fallout TV show is pretty good so far. The, the Fallout TV show is awesome. There's a, that's a straw man argument for the exclusivity and that ship is sailing. Explain to me what straw man what straw man argument I made about exclusivity. Walk that out for me. I think you heard a fancy word for a fallacy and you're just trying it out. You're trying it on for size. What what straw man fallacy did I did I employ talking about exclusivity? If games drop day and date, are you gonna play them on PC or PS5? It depends on the game. It depends on the game doc because <clears throat> It also depends on whether or not I've upgraded my PC. Currently, I would probably play on my PS5. I would probably play on my PS5. Because, like, as an example, Horizon Forbidden West, I didn't have to worry about anything. I just turned it on and played. When I played Horizon Forbidden West on my PC, I had to go in and fiddle with settings. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to get consistent performance. You know, I didn't have really any frame issues at all. They did a, they did an immaculate job with the port. But I 100% would play still on my PlayStation 5. Because th- I just know. Like, now you're asking about day and date. Again, the concern would be, I, am I going to be able to have that level of confidence? Like, Doc, you did this once on my podcast. You asked the chat, is Spider-Man 2 going to have a 60 FPS mode? And everyone in chat said, yeah. And you were like, see, you have no doubt about what they're going to do over there. Why? Because it's been consistently shown to be a priority of PlayStation first party studios. And when you build for one platform, you're, I'm way more confident in what I'm going to get every single time. They bring Spider-Man 3 to market, day and date on PC. My confidence is not as high. It isn't. It's not. Because I've been watching the games market for a really long time, and there's a very, very clear pattern of multi-plat games struggle with optimization and with performance consistently. They're the ones where we see the struggle. They're the ones that come to market before they're ready. Do you ever wonder why that is? Why the big third-party projects seemingly always come to market before they're ready? Because the project is taking longer than they wanted it to. The devs can only make quality games only for one platform. That's a straw man argument for exclusivity. Okay, I'm going to explain straw man fallacy to you because you don't understand it and you're misusing it. A straw man argument is where I prop up a really bad argument and then I wail on that argument. It's a straw man. It can't fight back and it's intentionally flimsy, okay? I have not done that when I say that devs make better games for one platform. Also you are doing what's called misrepresenting what I said and misquoting me, right? I don't know if there's a fallacy there. Maybe poisoning the well. Probably not. Anyways, I never said that devs can only make quality games. I said that it's easier. It's better. They prefer it. The project is shorter. That doesn't mean that you can't have a quality game as a multiplat. It's harder to do. Right? You smart Lono, I like that. Respect brother brought back my own talking point. Very nice. I have a very I've I've I have a very good memory, Doc. <laughs> I have a very good memory. So I've never said you can only make a quality game for one platform. You're misrepresenting me. You'd make a great YouTuber, by the way. Take me out of context, clip that, and then make like a 20-minute video calling me an idiot and claim that I said something I didn't say. There's good money to be made being a liar on YouTube. Go for it. You'd make a great YouTuber. I never said that. I never said you can only make a quality game for one platform. Didn't say that. So the irony here is that you're straw manning. You distorted or exaggerated my position in order to argue against it. The the the, the sheer irony that you straw manned me to claim that I was straw manning is just like wow. <laughs> to quote the Princess Bride, truly you have a dizzying intellect. <laughs> 
PC is too much trouble. I just want to play. I have no time to figure out why my bootloader is not syncing with my flim flammer. <laughs> I was like, what's a bootloader? Uh, Severin says, there we go, straw man from Miriam Webster. Yeah, it's when you distort or exaggerate another person's argument and then you attack the distorted version of the argument. That's literally what he did. He exaggerated my argument. You're claiming you can only make a quality game for one platform. That's not what I said. (laughs) (laughs) Good night. It was, yeah, it's a straw manception. It's a straw. It's a straw manception. Listen, I've been streaming for exactly one hour. You guys are making this fun and enjoyable. I appreciate it. It's lively. It's getting a little spicy, right? Make sure and smash that like button. It helps more people find this video. Let's go for three hundred likes. Okay, we're currently at like two hundred and twenty. All right. Also, also, if you want to talk in the chat, talking in my chat is free. You just have to hit the subscribe button. You don't have to become a member. But if you become a member, you get access to all kinds of great things. You get access to the writer's room, which is a daily segment that we do where we plan the next day's shows. You get to see behind the scenes. You get into my Discord. And this Friday night, my wife and I, Coincidentally enough, we have to play Ghost of Tsushima with two controllers if you guys hit the goal. Currently, we are at 154 members. You are halfway to the goal. The goal this week was 300 members. 300 new members, gifted members, whatever. You guys are going to have to dig deep to hit that goal this week, all right? We stopped saying you have to hit the, the total member count because that was ridiculous. You guys would be like really close to hitting a total member count of 2,500. And then we would lose some members overnight. So we've, we're no longer doing that anymore. So help us hit that goal. Join right now. Click join. Pick the $5 member. It supports me directly. You'll notice I've been streaming for an hour and I never hit the button to run an ad. I didn't do that. You'll notice that I'm not like, I mean, we have the coffee and I wear shirts from into the AM, but I'm not like this stream is sponsored by, and then I do like a two minute video that's been pre-recorded. We don't do that. Why? You guys sponsor the show with your support, with your memberships. That's not what you said. You said it's easier to optimize and build for one platform. Then confused me by saying PC Porps are helping them learn PSSR upscaling tech. It's confusing to me, honestly. No, 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 no. I theorized. I said maybe with developing games and leveraging the PSSR upscaling, maybe that can help them get better at building for PCs because that's a big element of developing for PCs now is leveraging DLSS and FSR. I said maybe. I don't know. I was purely theorizing, Severin. I talk really fast. And when I was talking about that, I was just like, I mean, maybe the first party developers right now leveraging PSSR. I don't know. Maybe that's like a bridge and it helps them get better at PC development. I I don't know. I think I think I also at that point in time, I said something to the effect of like, I think Insomniac helped with their games you know coming to pc so maybe they're learning how to develop for pc too i just i just don't know i was just throwing out theory i'd say putting the upscalers in previous pc ports was helpful to pssr right zubair like they started interacting and learning how all that stuff worked and then they came up with their own thing and we don't know pssr could have been developed in conjunction with amd because amd is going to be doing an ai upscaler apparently this year so maybe maybe again that's a nice tech bridge for first party playstation developers to say we're going to take our games to pc sooner or day and date and we're now a little bit better at building over there. Like It's not as hard as it, as it once was. Again, I had somebody from SIE tell me, they're like, it's not this trivial thing to just suddenly start developing Horizon Forbidden 3 for PC at the same time as PlayStation. It's not trivial. It's it, it, They're completely different with respect to the software and the architecture. Uh, Raptor with a five bomb. Thank you so much, Raptor, taking us to 39 members on the day. He says, come on, boys, we can hit this goal. 150, all right? 150 members is what's needed to hit the big goal for the week. If we got 50 people to go on a five bomb train, we'd hit it. Honestly, we don't even need that. There's 500 people here. Let's If we go on a single train, 150 people. Five bucks. Gift that gift of love to somebody else. Thank you, Raptor, for doing that for five folks. 
And then I've already gifted the five that I owe. I'll owe more if we hit 50. You guys keep making me do that every day. That's great. That's been fun to see that, to see that many people getting to come now into those new segments. I would say learning PC architecture translates to consoles somewhere down the line at some point. Another one from Raptor. He's tempting the 10 bomb. He just set it up really nicely. 40 out of 50. That's my man. That's a layup right there. Thank you, Raptor, for doing it. I am Melee. Have the same idea. He drops a single gifted on the chat. Or maybe you guys are trying to start a single gifted train. I don't know. The record for a single gifted train is still currently 26. 26 single gifteds in a row one day. It was amazing. Uh, Makwai says, I'll get in on the action. He gifts a member. All right, we have to track this single train. So we were at 39. Remember 39, because we'll have to subtract that. If you guys keep going, we'll subtract it and see if you guys can't break the record. What's good, Thrifty? What's good, Feed? I see you in the chat, Feed. It's just blue. Brand new VIP plus today. Rob V gifts a member. Takes us to 44 members on the day. Getting a little electric in here. Five gifted singles in a row. Mm, I don't know. (laughs) Only 145 to go. (laughs) Mash gets another one and takes us to 45 members on the day. We'll count five bombs and ten bombs in here also, by the way, guys, in the train. We will. I will count them. I will be that generous. Rissick gifts one. And it goes to Kelly Green. Good to see you, Kelly Green. Hopefully you're here today. Sometimes the gifts go to people that aren't in the chat. Good to see you, Marcus. Mash gifts another one, man. I, I can't keep hitting the button. I can't do it. I'm gonna, you guys are going to break the alert. You're going to break my OBS. You're going to make OBS crash. There it is. Eight in a row. And another one from Stone Spire. Nine in a row. And another one from... Oh, John James Baker with the 10 bomb says, I'll take that action. And takes us all the way to 58. And now 59. Another one comes in from Raptor. And I owe you guys five now for hitting another milestone. And Mash with another one takes us to 60. There it is. The train now continuing to go 61. Another one comes in from DK Baker and Thrifty renews at 12 months. Holy crap, I hit a year. Let's go. Thankful for this community who is so giving. That's an entire year. Currently, you guys are at 22 members in a row. I'm counting the 10 bombs, the 5 bombs. I'm counting them all. And you guys are currently at 22. And now you're at 24 members in a row. Two more come in. One from Ash and one from Detonator. And takes us to 63. I'm not in a position to be a member. uh, So I want to thank whoever uh, for my memberships. I watch the channel every morning. Great place uh, for the top new gaming news. Thank you again. Mitchell, we're so glad you're here. And we're glad that we made that change. You can now... Come to the writer's room. You can come to Friday night. And maybe this Friday night we'll be playing Ghost of Tsushima with two controllers. It's my favorite game. And my wife and I will play with two controllers. It's a feature on the PlayStation. It's a ride. And we've got some more coming in. And we've got... When was the... Oh, shoot. What was the last one that I added? Uh... Rich, I think I didn't add Rich Rod, Mash, Melee, Lone Wolf, four in a row! Just came in and takes us to 67... 67 members unbelievable the single train is still alive and well you guys currently broke the record that's 28 members in a row 28 members in a row and two more come in mash and raven we can't even have a conversation right now 69 members so far on the day nice i need to do my five my goal is confusion <laughs> Mash. Mash is like, I'm just trying to confuse you. Uh. (laughs) That's perfect. All right, I'm going to give the five that I owe now. I do those right away. Uh, For Sony, Lone Wolf with another one takes us to 70. Hang on. I want to at least read some of the feedback here. All right, you guys are making it impossible. Uh, Now that's 72. 72, one more from Keithius and one more from Mash. And I added Lone Wolf's already. There's my five. Ron M says, for Sony, day and date will come if it fits their business model. Live service is a way to test, and it's a place that is most logical. Yesterday when we were talking about this show, Eugene said that he felt like Helldivers like, open their eyes. Because they're like, listen, if we have a game take off, and it's really popular, look how much money we can make, and imagine how much money we could make if we weren't selling it in a Steam store. Thank you, DK Baker, for another one taking us to 73. 
Guys, I'm trying to poke fun at console gamers, and you keep filling the chat with gifted gosh. All right, hang on. Let me read Let me read uh, something that Zubair said. What did he say? Hey, Lono, when Ghost comes out on PC, are you going to replace the slide-in card with a higher-res version uh, with more FPS? The slide-in card? What? <laughs> and Stone Spire comes in with one, and MASH comes in with one, and that's 75. That's 75 on the day. We started the day at 120. So 75 takes us to 195. You guys are crushing it. You're five away from 200 members on the week. And I owe five more. You guys are absolutely demolishing chat right now. People are literally leaving because they because I'm not talking to chat anymore. I'm just shouting out members. If you guys are enjoying the show and you're getting a gifted member and you want to show some support, man, smash that like button and two more comes in one from charles freeman and one from miles high takes us to 77 the member train is continuing to go it's continuing to go another one comes in from odin arrow taking us to 78 this is this is a monster this is it's just the beginning it's just the beginning of a monster i can tell you guys aren't quitting you only need to sell 71 customers in your own store to make what you would selling to 100 steam customers yes Yes, one from MASH, another one from MASH takes us to 79. That's the thing I think people keep forgetting, is that if you've got, listen, PlayStation games pull, I don't care, like, I guarantee you, guarantee you what I was saying earlier about PlayStation first party games, I will get called a pony for that. And I don't care. It's my opinion based on the quality of the games. And one from Freeman and five from Marcus takes us to 85. And I'll be honest with you, I think... In the market, I think PlayStation games pull. They do. Videos about Horizon Forbidden West, its port, or Tsushima, or God of War, or Spider-Man. People are interested in PlayStation games. And a single from Catwalk, and a 10-bomb from Cardock Ren, and a 5 from MASH, taking us to 86, 96, 101, and then 102, thanks to Freeman, unbelievable, we're going to blast past 100 just like that, and I know, I know, I know you guys five more, they're really good games, and a single from Marcus, thank you, Uh, Eugene says, I know Zubair says, they're really good games, even if they aren't your bag, you have to recognize the quality. Well, they get nominated for awards. Charles Freeman with another one as well. Keeping the train alive. 104. This is the biggest train. We're calling this a single train. We're, we're, we're allowing you guys to cheat. I'm allowing you to cheat. You guys have now done 65 members in a row. 65. You need to account for development and maintaining fees of a dedicated launcher. Right, but that's covered by the fact that they now make 100% on every sale instead of giving 30% to Steam. And a 5, uh, I'm sorry, taking us to 105, Charles Freeman tempting one of the big boys to drop a 20 bomb all the way from 105 to 125. We'll see if they take the bait. There's some big boys here today. Guys, we need 34 more likes on the video. We're getting comments uh, on, this guy says, I wonder if PlayStation Plus will go to PC. Uh, very likely would if they did their own launcher i just want to reply to some of the comments we do the monologue now in a premiere and it went this morning and mash comes in with a single gifted and takes us to 106 thank you so much mash for doing that and this guy says playstation going third party lol no they're not going third party you will not see playstation suddenly task their developers with hey can you develop your games for the nintendo switch oh also insomniac we're going to need you to develop for the split tier xbox console that's basically floundering that's not going to happen it's not and since console as a concept for Xbox is completely changing and every screen is an Xbox, how on earth would you even make a game for an Xbox? Like whatever an Xbox is going forward. Right? Like th- th- there's no, there is no sign of going third party here. Th- th- there's no evidence of that. Why would they make games for Xbox? Why? Third-party developers came back from the GDC and indicated that they don't really see the point in making games for Xbox anymore. It's a smaller platform, and the sales are worse. Why would PlayStation suddenly do that? That wouldn't make any sense at all. Let's spend more money and more development time building our game for weaker hardware. Oh, and also for a platform that spends less money on games. Like, their ratio of sales are always the worst. 
Like, there's literally no way you're ever going to see that happen. It doesn't make an ounce of sense. I understand that if you're, like, hyper-loyal to Xbox, it's been unenjoyable to see the brand pivot, but that doesn't mean that PlayStation is doing the same thing. And if that's some sort of consolation to you, number one, it's a fantasy land, and number two, that's weird. Like, why would... Is that going to make you feel better? Is that going to make you feel better if that's what they end up doing? I don't think they're going to, and if they did, it wouldn't change anything. It wouldn't change anything. It would still have, you'd still have Xbox doing what it's doing. Like, it wouldn't suddenly revert what's upsetting and disappointing. They're not going to, but if they did, you honestly think it would make you feel any better? Like, that's just weird. Ask any dev that sells games on PC. They get the super majority of their sales on Steam versus all the other storefronts. The 30% they give up is made up in the extra sales they would otherwise not get. Yeah, but see, there's a real compelling thing, I think, when you have property that is super, super well-known, and you're like, yeah, we're going to do it day and date, but you got to come to our launcher for it. And then we'll bring it to Steam later. Like, I think the fact that they would make 100% on every one of those sales, like, I do not think... I do not think PlayStation would care about that. PlayStation would garner more sales than they're garnering right now with ports probably day if they do day and date and then they would make 100% of every sale instead of giving some to Steam and they could just come to Steam later. They I mean I there are definitely people that would not buy in in a new launcher. They they don't like it. But the difference would be that they would bring the game to Steam later. A lot of the people that did their own launchers, they would never bring the game to Steam later. They would just keep their own launcher. Like, you had to go through them in order to get the game. You had no choice. I think that's different. It's also different when you're a publisher and not a platform. I think when you're a platform, people are like, oh, well, I love their games. Like, what, Ubisoft? Do you think Ubisoft was really going to convince people to buy like games in large enough quantities and to not buy them in Steam. I don't even know. When did they bring their games to... Uh, when did they do that? How long ago did they do that? Wasn't there a time where you couldn't even get like Assassin's Creed? You had to go through their, their, their stupid app or whatever it was called? I don't even remember because I played almost all the Assassin's Creed games on console. Have they always been there or was there a time where they removed them? There was a time where like I couldn't get, what was it? It was Anthem. Anthem was a game that I couldn't get in Steam. I had to go through the Origin launcher. And with Ubisoft, I swear there was a time where I had to use their launcher. Like I couldn't just go um, to Steam. As soon as he said margins, he exposed himself. Who are you talking about? I agree with the 70% they'll get from users on Steam will be greater than the 100% of whatever PlayStation thinks they'll get with a new launcher. I mean, you could be right. There's no way to really know. There's no way to know if the PC audience, like if you bring God of War Ragnarok to PC and they put it in their launcher first and then like I don't know six months later comes to steam you're probably correct that there's a good portion of people that would be like well I'm just going to wait but if it's day and date and it's a big title and it's in demand like spider-man 3 I don't know man I think a lot of people would say it's worth it dude that's a good game I played the first two I played miles morales I played spider-man 2 right I'm not saying that that there wouldn't be people that would wait. There certainly would. There'd be plenty of people that are like, dude, I'm not doing that. I only play in Steam. But if you're... If you're looking at a big-name title that's got draw, I don't know, dude. 
the hard thing is is that for a long time I agreed with what you guys were saying I was like why would PlayStation do their own launcher I said it was stupid I said people always complain they don't like it they don't want it they don't want to download it why would I said the same thing I was like why wouldn't you just lean in to to Steam you know according to the back end we had 12 thousand impressions in the first 40 minutes that's literally impossible the video was set to private i i think that this impression counter creature i don't think it's accurate i think it literally shows us what impressions we have now and i think it draws a straight line down to when the stream started i think it's a glitch there's literally no way there's absolutely no way we currently have 20,000 impressions, and according to this, we got the vast majority of them when the video was set to private. There's just, that's simply not possible. YouTube is drunk. Gifted member from Insomniac Black, thank you. We've been trying something new at the premiere in the morning, and we don't want you guys to see the live show and to get confused. And so, I've been setting it to private, and we monitor like how the video gets treated when you do that. And this video in particular, I, I, this is got, if they're doing that, if they're still doing, they're throwing a private video out into the public search, they've got to fix that. Steam is also not under pressure from public investors. A launcher could become profitable, but it absolutely will not be at launch. Um, I did refresh my homepage like 7,000 times. No, you can't see the video. It's not there. It like, no one was even waiting in the video. No one was waiting in the live stream video. It was set to private. I was on the dashboard. Like, nobody went into the video that, that you couldn't. It wasn't possible. I don't get it. I don't understand the fear of the Epic Game Store. What's the issue? I mean, my understanding anytime I've talked to, like, super loyal Steam guys is they've always said... I have no interest in the Epic launcher because it's like not a good launcher. It's like misses basic features. Number one, they also don't want another launcher. They're like, this is where my games are. Just put them here, please. Right? Like we played uh, an Epic Store exclusive yesterday. It's in early access, Witchfire. Um, and that game still, I think, has a long way to go. We tested out the various classes and the starting weapons are just not... I just think they're pretty bad. I think the original starting weapon is still the best, the revolver or whatever it's called. Um, so I think that was one of the c- complaints was it's not a good launcher. It's like missing features that you would want in a launcher. Um, and they just don't want another one. They just prefer to not have a second launcher. It's like a You know, it's like everything's in one place. Their library's all in one place. Their profile's all in one place. All of their achievements and trophies are all in one place. So, yeah, I think that it makes sense that they're like, why would I... I just want to have everything here. Like, I get it. I don't really care. Mick D09 with a gifted member. Thank you so much. Keeping the train alive. There's still members at the top of the chat. They haven't fallen off yet. Those 10 bombs are holding on. The Epic Store has no features, the reviews aren't visible, and somehow every game on Epic seems to have much higher review scores than anywhere else. Yeah. I I get it. Like, I don't care. Like, when I wanted to play Witchfire, I wasn't like, oh, man, I gotta open up Epic. I, I didn't care. I wasn't, like, upset about it. Now, would I have preferred to just open up Steam, install it, and play it? Yes, because the Epic Store is, is it is, it's crap. It's like, it takes forever to open. It never, it, it never leaves me logged in, even if I tell it to. It, like, it's like, it never leaves me logged in. I always have to, like, re-log in. The way it shows your library is ugly. The navigation's terrible. It's just, it's not a good launcher. It's crappy. It literally looks like, have you ever been to like a website and you feel like somebody pushed a button that said, make me a a website with a shopping cart and it just feels super generic and thrown together? That's what the Epic Store feels like. It doesn't feel like a genuine launcher. It feels like a first pass at a a storefront website with a shopping cart. (laughs) That's what it feels like. You know what I mean? And... 
I've always thought Steam was pretty utilitarian. Like, Steam's never been super, you know, snazzy, but Steam has, like, all my games in a list off to the left. I click on it. I don't know. It just... Maybe because it's... It, it was there first. It just, like, sets those expectations. All the things you just said are true for Steam as well. Maybe it's just familiarity. Like, maybe just because I'm familiar with Steam, I'm like, I just think Steam is better. Like, it just feels like it looks better. It feels like it's easier to navigate. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make sense for them to do their own launcher. It could be successful, but I think they'd need to constantly feed PC titles into the launcher. I don't think they'd come fast enough. Steam hasn't updated its front-facing stuff in like 904 years. It doesn't make sense for them to do their own launcher, says Bold Alpha Wolf. It could be successful, but I think they'd need to constantly feed PC titles into the launcher. I don't think they'd feed games fast enough. In my opinion, the reason they would do the launcher is purely based on money. It would be purely based on money. It would be... It, that's the only reason they would do it. They wouldn't do it because they want to, like, feed it games on a regular basis. They wouldn't do it because they feel like they want to have... See, I think... I really do think... Oh, yeah, you decided to make another account. Yeah, get out of here. Um, I really do think that if they did this it would purely be because they want their titles to be sold in their own marketplace and not in steam because of the money they're not trying to create an actual pc storefront launcher they're trying to create a place for their games to be sold for their games to be like only being purchased from them it would be a money-based decision like that's why they would do it and again I struggle with this because I agree with a lot of you like a week or two ago I'm like that's the dumbest thing ever why would PlayStation do that why would why would PlayStation make a launcher I thought the same thing I'm like everybody's gonna say no everybody's just gonna say oh I only want to buy it in Steam Steam's too big Steam's too yeah, their, their, their user base is too loyal Ula Tech is keeping the gifted member train alive and he goes and renews for 14 months hey Lono great show good to be back Tekken 8 has stolen my life game of the year thank you so much Ula Tech dropping uh, I'm sorry bumping us to 109 Ula Tech keeps the gifted member train going and I don't even know if you guys yeah okay that's good for me personally it comes down to file difference and restrictions on file access some places don't give you 100% access to your game files like uh, game pass for example steam has no restrictions bold alpha wolf with three months of memberships right reforge but where's the draw for the user with the playstation launcher The draw for the user would be if they have a PlayStation account, right? All their stuff would be there. They'd see their friends list. They would see their trophies, right? They would see everything. Uh, The other draw would be you could play it in both places because you're not buying it from Steam. You're buying it from PlayStation with your PlayStation account. Now, obviously, the people who don't own a PlayStation and don't have a PlayStation account and have no interest in having a PlayStation account, you're like, what's the draw for the user? That's not really what matters at that point. The what point what matters is do you want to play this game? Like imagine if they would have done this with Helldivers 2. There'd have been a bunch of people that stood on principle and said, I'm not buying that game from the PlayStation launcher. But if a game is cooking and it's popular and it's getting good reviews and it's getting good scores, that's a pretty compelling reason for somebody to say, you know what? I don't really freaking care. I just want to play the dadgum game. I'm gonna download the free launcher. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy the game. You see what I'm saying? Like, I definitely think if your game has draw and your game is popular, that's compelling enough for somebody to say, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going to download the launcher. Like, that's that's the draw. That's what the, the consumer benefits by getting a good game. I remember a time when people hated Steam and the idea of a centralized location monopoly for their games. I do find it weird that... (laughs) I do find it weird that the people that are like super hardcore PC Master Race and, you know, would call me a corporate shill and all this other nonsense because, you know, name-calling is the behavior of mature adults. 
you know, it's weird that they're like super, super in support of a centralized you know, one company has it all. One company has all the power there. Like, that is interesting. Now, they would probably push back and say, but it's just a storefront. It's just a storefront. I mean, hasn't Steam been sued numerous times because of their anti-competitive behavior? Who's the corporate shill now? I will sell my freedom for some convenience. (laughs) I'm glad I'm not in a position to decide if they only... Hang on, it moved. Uh, If they only allow their games on their launcher, they will get crucified, but it will still probably sell. That's because Steam is player-friendly. I have always praised them for that, Mediocre Milton. I have always said that Steam is the most consumer protected environment in existence. They have that going for them. I've I, like I'm not being like critical of Steam when I say that. I just find it to be pretty funny that people that are like you're a corporate chill and then they're like super celebrating a centralized storefront for PC games. Um anyways, the the point that I've always made about Steam is it is the most consumer protected environment. The user scores are the most reliable representation of the product's quality. I've always said that. You cannot trust these outlets that review the games anymore. You can't. You cannot. They'll give a game like Jedi Survivor 9s and 10s. They'll be over the moon about Dragon's Dogma 2. And no one hears about microtransactions. No one hears about performance issues. No one hears about any of that. They're all media darling. This game's fantastic. And then you go to Steam and you're like, no, it's not. Steam is the single most consumer friendly environment for gaming. Because you can buy the game and you're like, this is a piece of trash. Give me my money back. And they're like, sure, here's your money. I have always said that both PlayStation and Xbox and Nintendo should have a refund button right on the game. You didn't like it. You played it for an hour. It's glitchy. It's buggy. It's not running all that well. You click on the game. You click refund and you get your money back. I 100% think that the government needs to step in and pass consumer protection laws that require digital storefronts to offer a refund procedure right inside of the digital storefront. We are not protected as consumers at all. I criticize PlayStation for that. I criticize Xbox for that. I will criticize Nintendo for that. I think it's BS. You should not be able to sell a good or a service and not have a very clear refund procedure for the consumer. I don't agree with that. Like, I don't go to Target to return something and they're like, yeah, you're going to have to go downtown, park in a parking garage, go into a building, go to the 17th floor, wait in the line and talk to Barb and she'll get you your refund. That's essentially what you have to do if you want to try to get a refund on console. Oh, and by the way, if you want to return this item at Target and get your money back, you got to go downtown, park on the 10th floor and go up to the top of the floor and talk to Barb. Oh, and you can only do it like once or twice a year. Like, that's how console users are treated, and I don't agree with it. Now, I still much prefer the convenience and the way that I get to experience games on the console, so I overlook it. I'm like, well, that's not a strong enough reason for me to not buy a console and to buy console games, because generally, we can tell if a game is going to be good or not at launch. Like we, we can sort of spot the stinkers, but there was no way to know that Jedi Survivor was going to be as bad as it was, or Dragon's Dogma 2. I mean... The whispers in the wind about Dragon's Dogma 2 told us, and I tried to warn people. I said, I don't know. I said, the, the, what I'm seeing about 30 FPS, even on their own Steam page, I was like, this game's going to run poorly. And it does. You can still get banned by a store if you return too much. That's not true. That's not true. Now, if you're doing something shady, sure, they can they can be like, listen, you can't shop here anymore. But like stores like Target and Walmart, dude, they're not even paying attention. I could go into Target every day and buy a broom and put it in my car and go back the next day and return the broom. 
And eventually they might be like, what the frick are you doing? Why are you doing this? They might question me, but they're not going to be like, you can't do this anymore, man. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care. They're not going to suddenly take a vested interest into like why I'm returning the broom. Right? So, now obviously like a mom and pop shop might be like, listen, you, you, we, we can't let you come in here anymore. We can't let you come in here anymore because it costs us money to swipe your credit card. We pay a fee on that. And then we got to give you your money back. Like you're, you're costing us money doing this. Give it a try. What do you mean give it a try? On average, how many games do you probably buy in a year? Let's say you buy somewhere between five and 10 games a year. So let's entertain what you're saying. So on average, you buy five or 10 games a year. If you could start refunding games, let's say you go up to 20 games a year. Do you know how many returns you would have to do at Target before they would say, hey, you need to stop doing this? It isn't 20. Believe me. My wife returns stuff all the time. And they're never like, weren't you in here a couple days ago and returned something? No. She returns stuff all of the time. I guarantee you, after a 12-month period of time, my wife has returned more than 20 items to Target. Guaranteed. At most, in a gaming marketplace, you probably would try to do, you know, even if you bought 20 games, you're not going to return all of them. You're not going to return a monsoon of games. The average retail store at that size isn't even going to pay any attention to you. It's some minimum wage worker who just can't wait to go home. They're like, you have your receipt? Cool. Beep. It'll be back on your card. That's literally what they would do. You're, you're, you're expecting them to like track me and be like, well, this guy's that guy that keeps buying brooms. Like they wouldn't care. You said everyday returning items. I said you should give it a try. I'm here to tell you they wouldn't care. They wouldn't. It's literally somebody that's not even paying attention half the time. They're like talking to the person next to them, right? They're they're doing something else. Like you have your return, cool. They open it up. They slide it to the side. They take your receipt. They scan it. They push a button and it goes back to your card and they go on their merry way. They don't care about that kind of stuff. Again, if you went to the extreme, they might question it or they might be like, listen, you can't buy brooms in here anymore. You're not even keeping them. You're clearly doing like something for a YouTube video or something like stop it. But in general, storefronts don't pay attention to that. If you returned something every week, they wouldn't even catch it. They wouldn't even know you're probably dealing with different, uh, different cashier every time you go in. So if you're returning like one game a week, to Steam or one game a week like a PlayStation Xbox allowed you to do it they, th- those companies what, what, what do they care for mine's the same way she buys stuff every week that she returns yeah all the time like what sweep the area we got him that's right yeah we got the broom guy well the the member train is about to fall off. The last 10 bomb is holding on up there with Cardock Ren. B Carter is legit. Just hit 10 months. I don't like your new format. I don't like two shows for one thing. I still enjoy your monologue. When it ends, I always get something else and not the redirect. I mean, I appreciate the feedback, but we we can't give a live show every day in, a, in an upload every day. We can't do it. I'm one person. So you having to do one extra click is the cost of me giving YouTube what YouTube wants. YouTube wants uploads. That's what the platform's built off of. I can't not give it uploads because you don't want to click something. Like, sorry. Like, I. if that sounds dismissive, it's because it is. Like, I got to do what I got to do. And if you got to click an extra button, you got to click an extra button. Like... That's just the way that it goes, man. <laughs> I need you to return these pants, Target. Too long again? Oh my gosh. Patrick Q keeps a gifted train alive and takes us to 110. He's keeping the dream alive. Thank you, Patrick Q. I appreciate it. Has to be a woman thing. I would guarantee you that 
if you tracked the returns at a target over an eight hour period, it's probably, yeah, like 90% of the consumers doing it are women. Well, probably because 90% of the people shopping are also women. You're proving my point. Their target audience, <laughs> target, <laughs> their target audience is, is women. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about if you returned items too often would they ever stop you and I was like my wife returns stuff all of the time and I made an extreme example I said if I went in and bought a broom every day and then tried to return it the next day I said I don't even think they would notice they don't right right I know you're making a joke about like I wouldn't use the broom but I was making an example of like doing it for a laugh right or a YouTube video. The point is, babe, that they don't even pay, they don't even pay attention. (laughs) Yeah, it's not about that. It's about the fact that the store, yeah, the store doesn't pay attention to it. Was, you're getting into the specifics, which is not the point. The point is that they wouldn't care. They don't care. If you have the receipt, they don't even look at you. They just beep. Yeah. It's true. Anytime I go into Target, it's like 90 to 10 female customers. Yeah, I mean, I would say it's a great place to meet somebody, but there, it's, it's usually moms, so. Yeah, moms with children, so. Barking, you're barking up the wrong tree. I think the grocery store is a great place, though. Go to the aisle of the food that you love. And if you see somebody getting the food that you like, you strike up a conversation, right? It's a very friendly environment, right? It's not, there's nothing threatening about that. There's nothing weird about that. It's like, oh, yeah, you like that too? Now, the, the store might be like, why are you hanging out <laughs> in the chip aisle? You know, what are you doing? What are you doing? I, d- I don't. <laughs> Who even goes in the grocery store anymore? You just do the click list. I've had the same room for 20 years. I've replaced the handle four times and the brush head six times. There you go. There you go. You're, you're, you're almost assuredly over the age of 50. G- I guarantee you. Correction. Lowen's grocery store approach only works if you're attractive. Don't get arrested by uh, my dumpy brothers. <laughs> why are you why are you talking to me in the donut aisle? <laughs> That's weird. Don't harass people on the ice cream aisle. <laughs> I always feel like when I've been in the grocery store, everybody's really friendly. You know, they're like, you know, I've had people help me find something. I'm like, I cannot find, like, staring at the stub. I'm like, where is this? And I'll just ask somebody, like, do you know where this is? You know? I think grocery stores are usually full of friendly people. What's wrong with going to the store? I wasn't saying anything's wrong with it. It's just super convenient to wait out to do the click list thing. You just have them, you have them bring it. You, you literally put in your order through the app, and then you go to the little lane and you're like, yeah, boop, I'm at number uh, three, and then they just bring it out to you. You don't have to like walk around finding everything. It's so, so convenient. It saves so much time. Like my wife being able to do that, both kids in the car and just sitting there with the air conditioning on and being like, yep, here comes everything we need for the week. <laughs> super, super easy, super convenient, well worth it. And then you can pay, she paid for something where like annually, it, it, it came out to like five bucks a month and they'll bring it to the house. They'll bring it to the house. You know what I'm saying? Like that's for five bucks a month? <laughs> Why am I going to go to the grocery store and, like, wander around and be like, well, they don't have it. Like, you put in your order, you know they don't have it, you know? And then you can and you can just go to another store or order from another store. It's super convenient. Did you just discover Amazon? Zubair, getting groceries for a family? What are you doing? You can't get the... What are you... What are you... Huh? You gotta go to... You can't go to Amazon for groceries for your family. Well, let's discover delivery guys. 
No, it's like a thing that Kroger started offering starting around like, I don't know, 2020 and 2021. Four and five years ago, you couldn't like have Kroger bring groceries to your house for like no money. Five bucks a month and they'll just do it. You would have to pay like a delivery service. Five years ago, pre-2020, that was not a thing. Five years ago, you couldn't go to Total Wine and say, can you bring me some bourbon and some beer to my doorstep? That was not a thing back then. That was a thing they started because of the pandemic. Yes, you can. Homie, This all this stuff is new. You guys are high. Back five years ago, you could not drive to the front of a Kroger, push a button on your phone, and they bring all your groceries out to you. That wasn't a thing. That was not a thing five years ago. This is a new economic development in the last five years. It's great. You guys are crazy if you think five years ago you were driving up to a Target or a Kroger and they were bringing stuff out to you or bringing it to your house. These are all new with the, with the, with the dawn and the explosion of Uber and Instacart and all these businesses. You guys think this stuff's been around for all that long? In KY? Amazon groceries only in certain areas. Yeah, and a lot of times they'll just source it from like Whole Foods or something. Yes, you can. Okay. I understand we might be in a multiverse. And you guys might be having some kind of weird Mandela effect trip job right now. Five to six years ago, you could not drive up to a Kroger or a Target and press a button and they bring everything out to you that you have ordered. That was not a thing. Now, you could use a delivery service to have groceries brought to your house, but Kroger wasn't doing it. You couldn't have Target or Costco do it. Now, Instacart also. I don't know when Instacart became a thing. Five and six years ago, that wasn't a thing. It, it, it blew up in the wake of 2020 and 2021. There's greater demand for it. Instacart started in 2012. I don't remember Instacart being here that long ago. I remember this all being new. This was like a new thing that Kroger was doing. It was a new thing that Target was doing. You could drive up and they would bring it to you. And then they started saying, oh, you can also, we'll bring it to you as well. We'll bring it to your house. You live in KY. You couldn't do that. Did you just get 24-hour gas stations? I live in a major I live in a major city. What are you talking about? I live in Louisville, Kentucky. I don't live in the sticks. Instacart started in 2012. Yes, but Instacart wasn't everywhere. Instacart as a company started in 2012. That is correct, but they weren't everywhere and I was talking about you pay Kroger five bucks a month and they'll just bring it to your house kroger does it like they actually do it now maybe they use instacart to service it that wasn't a thing five years ago that was not a thing that kroger was doing it wasn't a thing the target was doing and the drive up thing as well driving up pulling into a bay and a lane and saying i'm in lane three bring all my groceries out that was also not a thing that the grocery stores and target were doing now, maybe they were doing that in your... So you're telling me five or six years ago, you could drive up to Publix and they would bring all your groceries out to you. Food Lion, Publix, Kroger, Giant Eagle. You could just drive up five or six years ago and they would bring everything out to your car. I've been in tons of cities and tons of places and that was not a service. That was not a thing five or six years ago. You had to go in and get it. It was like the dawn of self-checkout and then the dawn of you can drive up and we'll just bring everything out to you because you would have to use an app i mean a lot of these companies didn't even have fully functional apps back then they would like you could like check to see what they had or what sales were going on Publix for sure whole foods for sure walmart for sure please specify this is true for your region i've had this in socal Google it and settle the argument? Well, I mean, I guess I presumed that when it took off in 2020 and 2021, that that was the reason. That the reason was, yeah, it's they don't want people coming into the store. When the sickie hit here, we're established grocery delivery options at my grocery stores. We use them day one of being locked in. 
Walmart curbside started in 2015. We don't typically, we didn't typically do grocery shopping at Walmart. I know, like I said, I know Kroger wasn't doing it. I know Target wasn't doing it. Target's like a national chain, though. So Target was doing that in your city, but not my city, five and six years ago. It was like a new development. I remember when they were like changing the parking lots for it. They were like putting in the little stands and like painting the spots for it. That was all a new thing in the last four or five years. It was Target was doing that in your city. They rolled this stuff out regionally. You're low on the list, stupid hillbilly. I feel like Louisville, I feel like we get stuff fairly fast here, though. Typically, maybe not. I don't know. I thought we were a pretty good city for that kind of stuff. Walmart delivery started in 2019. Okay, yeah, so five years ago. So it picked up pace in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Understandably, it picked up pace, and now more, more services and more people are offering it. They launched it at select stores in 2014, Sven says, in the Bay Area. I mean, it makes sense you would launch it in areas like that first because of the way that the areas are set up and how getting to the store is a pain in the rear. Like, they're trying to make it easier. Like, Louisville's more sm- we're, we're smaller. It's, it was, it's a lot easier to go to the store here. Can you do a quick recap, please? Yeah, I don't know how we got on this subject. Only thing Louisville gets is uh, fastest horses and FedEx. I mean, we're also a major hub for UPS. I, you know, we also we have a small but very well connected airport. I, it's we, that's one of the great things about the city. It's like a small airport, but because of the because of the hub that it is, I can you know you can get flights to a lot of a lot of places direct. If Sony goes day and date, I'll never play a PlayStation game again. I can't support them anymore for degrading their games, but they'll 100% not do that. So you think going day and date would degrade their games? Why is that degrading? Are you worried about the quality because of multi, like multi-plat development, or is it something else? Like I, th- that, which is it? Like I'm kind of confused. Like, are you are you standing on principle and you're like that's degrading to the games? Or are you worried about, like, the multi-plat development? Like, developing for multiple platforms would hurt quality. Because I have that concern. I voiced that concern uh, in the monologue. It was like... I, I, I'm, I think they do a great job because they only develop for one platform. The quality will become Xbox games. Louisville Metro is 1.3 million. Baltimore, DC is 8, big, 8 million. Big difference. San Francisco, LA, New York, Chicago. Order of magnitude bigger. Well, right. And those types of services are going to be more popular in super populated areas like that. Because it's it's that's that's a diff, that's a cultural difference. You know what I'm saying? Like when people move to like New York City... That's something that like families always struggle with in New York City is like grocery shopping for a family is a huge challenge. If you're literally like downtown, you got to figure it out. You, you're gonna buy groceries for your family from like a bodega. Like you're gonna that's that's always gonna be different in densely populated cities, especially. Those services are gonna be more popular because there's a giant and then there's not just a giant need. There's money to be made. People will pay. Because it's like, dude, I'm not, I'm not freaking going downtown or trying to do that. You know, bring, bring it to me. It's a little different in a place like Louisville. It's like, I, I can take 10 minutes and drive to the grocery store, fill a cart full of stuff, and I have everything I need for a couple of weeks. That's what we were, that's what we were all saying, you effing hillbilly. Well, no, you guys weren't saying that your city's small so you didn't get the services. You were basically saying these services have been around for a really long time. Now, near the end, you guys started pointing out, like, yeah, I mean, we've had this for a really long time because, you know, it, it came here first or whatever. At first, it was just like this clash of, like, in my in my experience, this all started in the last four or five years. And you guys are like, we've had that for 10 years. I'm thinking, no, nah, I've, I've been in a lot of places and I've never seen that offered. Even when I would go down to Florida, I wouldn't see that. And that was Odessa, Tampa area. PC doesn't ruin everything. 
funniest thing I've read. I don't think he was trying to argue that PC would ruin everything. 64% of devs in gaming prefer to develop for PC. Where are you getting that stat? And if you're including indie games, that's a very slanted number due to the fact that indie games have a much easier time launching on Steam than launching on a console. Like... If you're going to cite that stat, tell me where you got it. And then, if it also includes the overwhelming monsoon of indie games on Steam, that's not even a compelling stat at all. It's like, okay. Sure. Yeah. Every little five and two man team gets counted in the count. <laughs> the big AAA games, you know, the big AAA studios, that doesn't seem to be the case they like i don't know gta 6 is coming to a console first um you know and 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 devs have consistently said they like building for one system can't really build for one system when you're building for pc so why would those devs be saying that are all those devs stupid they're not as smart i don't know <laughs> like bethesda arcane uh, Ubisoft, tons of devs have spoken out and say they prefer to build for one system. Uh, Square Enix. So they're apparently, like, they don't count. Which most don't make money. Well, for sure. PC made Xbox games even worse. That's why we got so much garbage. I actually think... I actually think the reason that Xbox games have been lower quality has nothing to do with PC. I think it plays a part, but I think Xbox shot themselves in the foot by having a two-tiered console they bottlenecked their console Darius Ward thank you for the gifted taking us to 111 we're close to another goal of 125 every 25 members I give 5 everybody knows the rules one bite everybody knows the rules Um, I actually don't think so I think it played a part but I think a greater contributing factor to the low quality from Xbox first party studios in the last four years has been the 18 month contractual policy that really really hurt 343 and secondly they literally entered this generation hobbled the series s like imagine going to your developers and saying all right it's time to start building for next gen here's your dev kits what do you mean dev kits plural yeah there's two and this one has less memory than the xbox one x what like they entered this gen hobbled there you're you're asking your developers to do something that is so counterproductive Louisville Kentucky the only place where people party two weeks for a two minute horse race you're right and it's a lot of fun (laughs) sorcerer with a gifted member thank you so much sorcerer for gifting and taking us to 112 huge day for the channel guys thanks so much Like, I think it's just too simplistic to be like, well, because they made their games for PC, they're all bad now. And it's like, I mean, no, I I think that certainly that played a role in the fact that now they've got a whole nother thing to consider as well. We got to make sure the game runs well in the Series X, the Series S, and then we have to also make sure that it runs on all the different configurations, you know, on PC. Now, again, there is more of a similarity between the architecture and the software, the operating system of the Xbox and PC. So that helps, right? Like the guy from SIE told me this morning, it's it's not trivial for a PlayStation game to come to PC. For Xbox, it's a little bit more trivial. It's not quite as much work. I don't think that's the main causality of lower quality games from Xbox. Like if you look at Starfield score, Redfall score, and Forza Motorsport score on Xbox... I'm sorry, on Steam. If you go to Steam and you look at those three games, Redfall, Starfield, and Forza Motorsport, it's very clear that those games are low quality. They have bad scores. I don't think that's just because it was developed for PC. I think it's because the developers underneath Xbox's ownership are set up to fail. I think it's why 
their games are all seemingly taking a while to come out. Like everybody's talking about, well, PlayStation First Party. Where's PlayStation First Party? PlayStation First Party is awfully quiet. Okay, sure. Yeah, they are quiet this year. They're leaning on third party and second party exclusivity deals. Yep, you're right in saying that. Okay. What's Xbox's excuse? Because they're doing the same thing. They've had an extreme absence of first party. I think you missed my gifted. No, I said thank you, Darius, and it was 110. I bumped it to 111, and then I bumped it to 112 for Sorcerer. Um, so, it's like... Oh, I just broke my train of thought. Frick. Oh, yeah. So what's Xbox's excuse? If they wouldn't have bought Bethesda last year, their only their only game, first party game, would have been Forza Motorsport. All three of the four, like, come on. Hi-Fi, Redfall, Starfield. Literally, had they not bought Bethesda, those games were in development, they were coming to the market, they were already planned, and they buy them, and that's why you got first party games last year. That's the only reason. And then Forza Motorsport. What what are all of the first party Xbox studios doing? What do you think? If you had to theorize, what's going on? Well, right now, the theory is PlayStation first party studios all pumped the brakes because of the PlayStation 5 Pro. We found out end of last year there was internal delays of some first party games. They were insiders. They were insiders that said PlayStation has games that are ready to go. I don't know why they didn't show them. I don't know why they didn't show them. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so they're sandbagging their games to get them ready for the PlayStation 5 Pro. What is, what's Xbox, what are are the Xbox studios doing? Now, there's a couple working theories. One working theory would be the reason we keep hearing about like the Gears of War collection is because they're getting it ready to come to PlayStation. Fable and Forza are like their only first party IPs that they didn't buy. Right, so... That's the point, though. What are all of the de- what are all of the devs doing? Where are all of the games? Theory, they're struggling with the Series S. <laughs> That's been my theory. Stone Spire with another gifted member. Thank you so much, Stone Spire, taking us to one hundred and thirteen. How 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 can you look at what Larian had to do and not think? Yeah, the first party studios are struggling with the Series S. And this is all related to PlayStation games coming to PC. It's all the same topic because if you're going to ask your studios to do parallel development or multi-plat development, it causes issues. Larian could not get Baldur's Gate 3 to come to Xbox the way that they wanted to. So you got to think about every single first party studio under Xbox facing the same challenge. They're all facing the same challenge. You want to do something as simple as split-screen co-op? Halo couldn't do it. Ballers Gate couldn't do it. And yes, it's an intensive, you know, feature that a lot of games aren't doing anymore. But if that's the line, then that means every Xbox first-party developer is hitting that line. And that's why when they start talking about PlayStation games coming to PC day and date, oh, they're going to make more money. I'm like... I don't know. You're talking about increasing budget. You're talking about the probably increased staff. You're talking about elongating the project and then the game coming to market and probably not being as good as far as optimization and quality is concerned. Larian had to invent a whole new memory management system to get Baldur's Gate 3 to run on the S. Yeah, imagine tasking all of your first party studios with that. Something of that effect. So that's why when I hear like, okay, PlayStation, you know, maybe they'll do their own launcher. You know, maybe they'll do day and date. The first thing I think of is mm, there's a clear pattern in the market that that's a recipe for the game comes out before it's ready because your project's just taking too long. It's like, no, the game needs to come out, man. Ship the game. So it comes out and it's not ready. So to me, PC day and date with PlayStation. I still feel like that's the goal long term by the time we get to the PS6 era. I just hope that between now and then they equip the developers 
to do it in a way that's as good as what we're getting right now. I want a game to come at the quality of Horizon Forbidden West and Burning Shores, and then just how good it is when it got ported over by Nixus. That needs to stay intact. If the timeline changes, so be it. I don't care. It doesn't bother me if... Ghost of Tsushima 2 or Horizon Forbidden 3 lands on PC day and date. I don't care as long as the quality is there. That's all I've ever been concerned about. Every time I've argued about exclusivity, that's my main driving point is it's the quality that we get. And if you sacrifice that to sell to more people, it's a giant risk because especially... If you don't do your own launcher, then they're just going to return the dadgum game in Steam anyway. If the game's not ready. I would be really interested to see, like, what was the number of returns on, like, Jedi Survivor? Like, how commercially successful (laughs) was that game? How commercially successful was that game on Steam? At the P6 era, it'll be day one PC. I think that's what they're building for. I do. That's what Hiroki Totoki said and this thing they did with Ghost of Tsushima and the PlayStation overlay, I'm like I think they're building for that, I think they're getting ready for that, they're gonna have their own launcher, they'll do day and date on PC in their own launcher and people can whine and moan and cry about it all they want, if the game is big and in demand, they'll ma- they'll be- make money on it, they'll sell it there and they'll make 100% on every sale instead of 70% why reward PC players with the games when they didn't buy the console? Because if you're trying to make money, you don't give a frick about that kind of stuff. That's an ideological position. PlayStation doesn't care about that. If you have 100 million people, Ben, if you have 100 million people who are like happy with their PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 5 Pro, and they're happily going to convert and buy a PlayStation 6, okay? 100 million people. If a couple million of those people decide to come to PC and then they're going to buy the game from PlayStation in their storefront, PlayStation doesn't lose there. They don't. They're still getting your money. They're getting 100% of your purchase. Now, the thing they miss out on, and Nick earlier in the stream was good to point this out, he's like, yes, but if you don't buy that console, they don't get your third-party purchases anymore. I think that's a fair-made point, and that's the risk and the high wire that PlayStation is probably considering is that, look, if we do this and let's just say 5% of the PlayStation console loyalists switch to PC, just 5%, that's 5% of your consumer base no longer buying third-party games in your, in your store. And you have to weigh that and say... Those 5% leaving the console ecosystem, is it worth the increase in the number of potential people who buy on PC who are never going to buy our console? I happen to think they stand to make more money if the quality's there, if the game can ship and be at that level of caliber that we've been getting from the from the PlayStation First Party Studios, if it can be at that level of, of caliber, then I think PlayStation stands to get way more people on PC because it's such an enormous community and people can sit here and be like well no they're not going to switch from Steam nobody wants another launcher it doesn't matter if, if, if this how many how many people are in the Steam user base do we know the user count how many Steam users are there how many as of January 2024, Steam has 132 million monthly active users and 69 million daily active users. 132 million people are on Steam. Okay, so there's more than that that currently own a PC, right? You don't, maybe they own a PC and they don't really use Steam, or they own a PC and they use the Epic Game Store. Who knows? Let's just say 130, round that up to 140 million. Because maybe there's roughly, you know, 8 to 10 million people who don't really mess with Steam, but they still use their PC for different things. I don't know. That'd be weird for a PC gamer to exist and to not have Steam. I think that'd be kind of odd. So let's just go with 132 million. Let's not even round it up. Out of those 132 million, how many of them do you think are so principled that they wouldn't download a PlayStation launcher to play Spider-Man 3? You think all 132 million? All all 132 million? They're that principled? They're not going to download a launcher? Remember when we were talking about my nephews? 
they just go where the games are they just they just they just go wherever their their friends are they don't care about downloading a launcher to play a game they're not that's not going to bother them they're not like dyed in the wool loyal to steam they're not wired that way so that generation is just going to download the launcher yeah that's fine i don't care and they'll and they'll get spider-man 3 and then when they buy spider-man 3 for 50 bucks if it's you know part one part two whatever you know 70 you know 70 dollars whatever you got to account for those unable to run anything but Among Us. Well, yeah, sure. 132 million is a lot of those people can't, wouldn't be able to have a, you know, a system strong enough to play like a PlayStation game. Sure. Those are just active members. The registered accounts is way higher. Right, right, exactly. Shooter Forever. It's more than 132 million. That's just 132 million active users, right, in January of this year. So it's even higher than that. You think hundreds of millions of PC gamers out there are that principled that they're like, no, dude, I'm not downloading the PlayStation launcher to play Spider-Man 3. They're not going to care. That's the number that PlayStation's going to crunch. That's the number they're going to crunch. If they can get 20 million people to just download the launcher out of the 132, probably even higher than that, you know, 150, 200 million, whatever the freaking number is, if they get 20 million people to download the launcher and they get, I don't know, two or three million of those people to buy Spider-Man 3 in their launcher, that's a very small percentage of the Steam user base and that's a lot of money that's a lot of sales, we know that's a lot of sales for a game on its opening week or opening month two to three million and they get 100% of it and they don't give any to Steam Two different audiences. The one that won Spider-Man 3 day one and the one that will buy Spider-Man 3 on a 75% off say, uh, Steam sale in a year. We're approaching 60 million PS5s. I really doubt there's 60 million on Steam with equivalent hardware. Yeah, I guess that would be the challenge, Eugene, is like, you know, if you, do, if you run the hardware reports on Steam, how many of those people are... Um, I did not mean to open up Spotify. Uh, let me exit. Let me exit. I need to restart Steam, see if I can get this game to install. Uh, Bold Alpha Wolf with a $5 super chat tip says, they are because when you merge a game with a Steam account, uh, you can't use the default launcher to play the game anymore. Those Steam gamers are all in. I don't think you're engaging with what I'm saying though. Bold Alpha Wolf. If they can get roughly, you know, 10 million, 20 million people to download their launcher and they get a couple million people to download Spider-Man 3 and to buy Spider-Man 3 through their launcher, that is a, just a freaking great move. That's a lot of money. Yeah, I can get it. No rest of the wicked's available now. Let me get this installed and then we'll go play it for a little bit. The vast majority don't do it, right? The vast majority would say, no, I'm not going to buy the game in another launcher. I'm going to wait for it to come to Steam. The vast majority. But when you've got 150, roughly, we're rounding up because it says 131 million active. Let's just round that up to 150. You know, 150 some odd million people. You just need a fraction of those people. Like, like 10 million. To be like, yeah, that's fine with me. I'll, I'll download that launcher. That doesn't matter to me. It's Spider-Man, right? It's the new God of War. I, I'd be really, really curious what the download number was for like Origin or Uplay or, or Battle.net, like any of those other launchers. I'd be curious what the download was, like how many people downloaded them. 1.5 million Spider-Man 1 games sold on a platform of 150 million and you think Sony will go day and date? I think they'll go day and date if they have their own launcher and they don't give any money to Steam. Yeah, I do. 
And the thing is, is if I'm wrong, it doesn't really affect anything because it just means the developers keep developing for PlayStation first. And that's, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it either way. My one, like, asterisk caveat condition is if they do this, the games better ship at the same quality that they're shipping right now. Eugene says, how many PC users don't use Steam? And wouldn't a PlayStation store? Why are Steam users so low, a PC so big? Kirk says, what's new? Uh, I'm sorry, PlayStation is also a premium brand. People will feel way more comfortable downloading their launcher than Ubisoft or Epic to play premium PlayStation games. Hardly anyone will be de-incentivized. That, I said that earlier, Kirk. I said, I think it's different when you, it's a platform. It's like, no, that's PlayStation. I'm. I, it's kind of like how it is now when you interact with like a cloud environment. It's like you're actually interacting with that ecosystem. It's like, yeah, it's PlayStation. You know, I'm not downloading some publisher's app like Origin or something. I'm downloading a platform's platform, basically. For, you know, for free, obviously. PlayStation 6 games, no console required. Well, that would mean they're pushing heavy into cloud. The no console required thing came with like smart TV cloud commercials. I would rather wait for it to arrive on Steam if they do both. Great, they're still getting money from you. I'll give them 3 million, maybe four. That's after the PlayStation launcher is proven to be a draw. Here's the thing, Bold. You're guessing, and so am I. We're both guessing how many people would move. The principle of what I'm saying is really what matters. The principle of what I'm saying is, if you've got 150 million people that that have a PC and that's where they game, you only need a percentage of those people to download the PlayStation launcher and buy Spider-Man 3 for it to be a commercial success. A, a, A percentage of 150 million people. I'm talking like like you're saying, four or five million people download the launcher, and let's say one or two million of them buy Spider-Man opening week. That's an extra one to two million sales that they wouldn't have had otherwise, and if it's in their launcher, it's no different than you buying it on the PlayStation. That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to drive at, is like, that's a money maker to them. That would be expanding. That's another one to three million, or one to two million, or you know, two to three million sales to help with that budget that keeps going up. And if you if you dig in and you wait for it on Steam, that's fine. That's fine. Six months later, 12 months later, they're probably going to get more sales anyway because it's coming faster. Like right now, the games come two to three to four years later. Still over a million that wouldn't buy the console. Yeah, I mean, as I said, Shooter Forever, that's a thing PlayStation would have to consider. What's the number of people that would say, instead of going from my PlayStation 5 to a PlayStation 6, I'm going to go to PC. What's that number of people compared to the potential number of people who download the launcher and pay for the game? That's the number they'd have to figure out. That's how you decide whether or not it would be a profitable endeavor. And you also have to take all of that potential increase, loss, what's the net. Then you have to take that and pit that against the increase in development time, bandwidth, project time, cost to bring the game to market. That's what determines whether or not they do this. How much longer is it going to take the game to come to market? How much more expensive is it going to be to to develop the game? Are we going to have loss of quality? And... How many people are we going to lose to PC instead of buying a PS6? And how many people are we going to potentially gain by having our own launcher? And when they crunch all those numbers, they'll say, can we make more money doing this? And if the answer is yes, then they will do it. Oiled up Wesker says, morning Lono, for me, really not really where I buy a game I'm interested in honestly depends on where I want the money to go in my opinion of the studio. And then Evidence says, with 16 months of membership don't think it's fair to playstation console players a pc gets online and the playstation network and the trophy support while the console player has to pay for that luxury i mean i'm assuming if you were playing through their store that would be a requirement 
you wouldn't get you wouldn't suddenly get around that. Zubair says, for 90% of the PC audience, the PS6 would be an equivalent or better experience. Tasting these games would cause more hardware sales. We aren't talking about people with 4090s. Right. And I think that's another compelling thing about this, is if they start doing this, and people buy the game through a PlayStation launcher, right? Or do they support DualSense? I'm going to do DualSense. I prefer the dual sense. Uh, okay. If 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 they go to buy the game on their PC, let's say they're like me, and they have a 2080 Ti rig, and you know the PS6 launches, and they're seeing these commercials. And they go and they download Spider-Man 3. We all know how that's going to run on a 2080 Ti in six years. Right? It's not going to run that well. But they now own the game in the PlayStation Store on their PlayStation account. Maybe I should just buy a PlayStation 6 for 600 bucks instead of trying to upgrade my PC. Right? gonna run better over there my rig's old can't handle it you know i I don't know i'm telling you 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 got to think about it from that perspective there's a massive amount of people in the pc gaming audience that don't have rigs strong enough to run a game like a a potential spider-man 3 it's not gonna run it that well and they're gonna be looking at well do i update my entire rig and buy an expensive graphics card or i can walk in the store pick up a box go to the counter 600 bucks and i'm in and spider-man 3 is gonna look and run beautifully you got to consider that that's going to be that's a lot of people in the PC audience that are in that hemisphere of power and they're going to say do I buy a really expensive graphics card and a new CPU probably a new motherboard and more memory as well then I'm going to need all of the cooling systems do I do that or do I just go buy a PlayStation 6 I think there are people that would do that. I think there are people that would say, you know what? I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm I'm just gonna buy the PlayStation 6. I don't it, again you have to crunch you have to crunch the You have to crunch that and, and you have to decide whether or not that, that's you know that's gonna be enough people. Um frame rate independent motion blur. No, I don't want any motion blur. Dynamic resolution scaling, yes. Why can't I turn... Oh, DLSS is coming soon. I'm poking around in... um, In No Rest for the Wicked. Okay. V-Sync. All right. Let me schedule this stream. And we'll check this game out. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get it up and running. That's 100% real, says Kirk. I have PC gamer friends that converted to the PS5. Consumers take the path of least resistance. That's what they do. They take the path of least resistance. And if it's cheaper just to buy a console than to upgrade their entire rig, they're going to do that. If it's easier, faster, cheaper, all those things, they're going to do it. Yo, it's good, Harry. Harry says, I don't agree with that, to be honest. People who game on PC are paying for the better experience. Yes, they could weigh up the choice, but investing the same money in their PC will still result in a better experience. I don't know. According to the numbers, the vast majority of PC gamers out there do not have very strong rigs at all. That means it's not a priority to them. If it was, then the vast majority of PC users would be upgraded. So if it's not a priority to to them, why would it suddenly become a priority because Spider-Man 3 comes out? And they're like, well, now now I'm going to spend money on all of the all of the hardwares and the peripherals, right? No rest for the wicked. 
we go. Mm. Okay. Nope. Uh, let's do that. I'm going to get this stream set up. Eugene says, Oh, I bought this Sony game through their store. The PS6 just launched, and now I can take that game I bought on PC to the PS6. There you go. I'm telling you, I like that you gotta count that in the equation too. Right? If you're gonna sit here and tell me, well, people would leave PlayStation to go to PC, or people wouldn't buy the game in a PlayStation launcher, if you're gonna sit here and hype hy- hype, you know hypothesize about all these different people and what they would do there are people that would do what we just said they would say well I bought Spider-Man 3 it's not running that great on my on my rig I have a more mid or lower end rig I, I now own the game I, I might just go buy a PS6 that's simpler and faster than ordering parts and upgrading my rig certainly cheaper than buying a brand new pre-built rig I would love to hear some takes from people running XX70 class cards. I'm like Lono. Sometimes I forget I'm a hillbilly. And a 10 bomb from Oiled Up Wesker right here at the end of the talk show. We're going to be going over to a No Rest for the Wicked stream in just a second. We're going to be playing this game. Uh, Let me set that up right now. Customization, redirect, boom. Exclusives matter. I I don't disagree with you. But I also think making lots of money matters. I also think expanding your user base matters. I also think that, you know, combating combating rising budget costs matters. Now again, making a game for multiple platforms doesn't necessarily bring down your budget costs. It can make your budget costs go up. You know? They're just, they're laying people off to combat the rising costs of budgets. I don't think you solve rising budget costs by being like, well, you know, let's, let's add more complexity to develop to the development pipeline and, you know, make the project take longer to come to market. You know, they'll do that if they crunch the numbers and can make more money. If the profit margin can go up, they'll do that. But that's not a guarantee. You do not have to upgrade the entire rig. Stop the cap. Okay, I know I'm not a PC expert, but I think it's hilarious to think that somebody would have a mid, mid-level mid or low-level PC and they can't play the, the, hy- the hypothetical. They can't play Spider-Man 6, um, Spider-Man 3, like it doesn't run that well. And you think, what, they're going to upgrade one thing? Are, have you ever upgraded a PC before in your life when it's mid or low-end and you now need to bring it up? You don't just upgrade one thing, homie. I know I'm not an expert on this, but ain't nobody being like, you only need to upgrade your video card. No, you're typically going to need to do everything. If your rig has slowly fallen behind and you're now considered mid to low end, you're not going to be like, yeah, just get a new graphics card. (laughs) And a five bomb from oiled up Wesker takes us over the line. 128 on the day. Next goal was 150. So we started the day with 120, and you guys got 128. So that's 140. I'm sorry, that's 248. You guys are now 50 members away from the goal, and I owe you five. You guys are 52 members away from the goal. We wanted 300 members this week, and you guys are super, super close. Your motherboard probably isn't good enough either. 
Yeah, a lot of the times if your rig has now fallen behind and is more mid-end to low-end, your motherboard's not even going to be compatible with some of the new stuff sometimes. Like, it's not going to be compatible with the new RAM that's in the market or the new CPUs or, you know, the the graphics card maybe. I don't know. You typically aren't going to be like, well, my mid-level to low-level PC needs to upgrade so I can play this new game. I'm just going to upgrade one thing. Wearing shorts to work? What is it, Friday already? That's right, that's right. Alright, I'm going to leave the goal up so you guys can see what's going on. I'm going to provide a link in chat as well. That's where we're headed. If you guys want to see some no rest for the wicked gameplay. I'm going to make sure and send a tweet as well. PC bottlenecks hit extremely hard when you're trying to upgrade single components like that. That's what I'm saying. Like, I am not an expert in this field, but I know commonly when you're like, well, it's time for me to catch up with the rest of the gaming world. My my rig's kind of fallen behind. You don't upgrade one component. You're not going to do you're not going to do that. You might not even be able to even if you wanted to. You might not be able to just to target one thing, you know? And then you're going to bottleneck your rig. Ah. I cannot type right now. What is that thing? Oh, this guy. This guy's skipping leg day, apparently. All right. I'm going to spam the link one more time, and then I'm going to start the new stream. We're going to get out of here. Guys, make sure and smash the like button on this video before we leave. Uh, We could probably hit 400 likes right here at the buzzer. Just about 80 more people (laughs) that didn't hit like yet. And then smash like when we get over to the new stream as well. Thanks so much for checking out this video. We are going to be diving into the No Rest for the Wicked Early Access gameplay. So this will be a No Rest for the Wicked gameplay stream. Very excited to play this. I love Moon Studios. Ori, uh, the first and second Ori games are some of my favorite games. The soundtrack of the second Ori games uh, was phenomenal. I think... Somebody said maybe they got the same guy to work on this. So if you're liking this past broadcast, you're watching it later, make sure and hit subscribe and the bell button so you don't miss my live shows and hit like, do all the things. And we're inching our way towards a great, great goal right now. I'm going to end the previous stream. We talked about PlayStation leaning more into PC. If you want to see my thoughts on that, there is both an uploaded monologue on the channel as well as a live discussion. Um, 